Shit going on, bro. I'm just going crazy lately. So, ain't nothing, ain't nothing to it. And just like that, we right back. Uh, another episode of the show about nothing, the pod about nothing, if you will, you feel me? So, man, I'm happy to be here. It is Thursday night. If you guys, you guys will be watching this probably Friday, Saturday. So, we just got done with the NBA trade de deadline today. And oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. So, y'all know what we're going to do. But, greatest Sunday of the year. Yes, the sir. greatest Sunday of the year. Yes, sir. Super Bowl Sunday. So let's jump straight into it, you feel me? Um, oh, by the way, I'm D-Rock. This is Ish. <laughs> uh, you feel me? Yes, All sir. platforms, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, we in this thing, show about nothing. All right. Follow us, TikTok, Instagram, all of that. All but that. as you can tell, we excited, bro. We yeah, it's Y'all stick, stick with us. Y'all stick with us. Grab your little drink, uh -huh. you know, get your little snack. Exactly. This is going to be a long one. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Y'all might have to take a break between this no, one. That's yeah, fine, we though. might have to take a break. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to get this done. All right. So, Super Bowl Sunday, man. Yeah. I am so excited. This is going to be a great one. Probably one of the – last year was a great one. But last year the issue was it was in L.A. And like Joe Burrow said, it was more of like a celebrity uh, a celebrity gathering. Yeah, like a celebrity just, event. Yeah, yeah. then it actually was like a football game. I right. think this year it will be more of a football game. So I'm very excited to see that. Um, but we have not made our picks. <laughs> but before we get to that, I do want to ask, man, what are you expecting from this game? I, I'm expecting 93 Jordan. You said that a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And I, I was making sure you were sticking to it. Yeah, I'm expecting 93 Jordan. All right. what, 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 we're, what we're walking into is an elite team, top to bottom in Philadelphia. Yes. With every piece you need, including quarterback, yes. top to bottom elite at every level. Two amazing wide receivers, two amazing linemen, two good running backs, mm -hmm. a quarterback and a half. Shout out, uh, mustache guy. A quarterback and a half. Um, <laughs> and then the defense. You got eight defensive linemen, mm -hmm. two Pro Bowl corners, amazing linebackers, safeties. They got it all. They got it all. And to beat a team like that, it's gonna take Jordan. You need. It's gonna take. It's gonna take fifteen. It's gonna take Jordan. It's gonna take a Jordan like. So, I agree with Ish, man. I. If you don't know, like I said, follow us on TikTok. I just released our top 10 players, and the number one was the best player ever. Didn't even put his name. I just put the best player ever yep. because that's what he is. Patrick Mahomes is the best football player ever, and I'm being so serious. It's just no other, it's just, it's just <laughs> no other way to say it. No other way to say it. So it's going to take him and Travis Kelsey being the best football player ever and the best pass-catching tight end ever to – beat this team because as Isha just told you guys this team is loaded from top to bottom and the issue is it's not like Kansas City is loaded their defense is not great their de their corners are but their secondary is a bunch of rookies their front four is the best part about their defense but the Eagles have the best offensive line in football and some people are calling them one of the five best offensive lines ever exactly. so yep. so who knows how much of a threat the that front four will really be so it will take Patrick Mahomes having one of the greatest Super Bowl performances we've ever seen in order for them to win this game unless the Eagles just fold in a way we've never seen before which I'm not expecting them to do yeah on the Eagles side of the ball Jalen Hurts you want that 40 million a year that's that dog you want that 175 guarantee might hit two might hit might two. hit two might there hit you two. go they were talking about giving daniel jones 37 a year listen if i'm jalen hurts agent and they've been calling me michael jordan and kobe for a couple weeks and herbert want 250 mm -hmm. maybe i want 260 maybe i want 260 maybe i want 275 really actually i mean we just <laughs> want a ball i mean we just <laughs> want a ball oh it's my third year what you yeah the, it's only gonna go up from here is how he's saying it he, he ain't going to stop working. So Listen, Jalen, Rodgers got one ring. <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, Rodgers only hey, got one. Hey, look. Steve Young, one ring. Hey, look. Listen, one ring look. make you a made man in this league, especially early. All right. So, if you are the Eagles, mm -hmm. how are you attacking this defense? Are you How are you attacking this Kansas City defense? Um, Ten-minute drives. Okay. Every drive needs to be ten minutes. I agree. Pound the clock. 
make their linebackers tackle, make their linebackers step up. I agree. Make the front seven affect the game and not just their front four. 100%. I would attack Chris. Anytime Chris Jones lines up outside, and this is this is really important about Jalen's health, mm-hmm. I would like them to attack him outside, read option, mm-hmm. force him to be in the interior defense where Lane, where Jason Kelsey, yes, the exactly. guards, we can double team him, triple team him, try to get a hold of him. I just... You have to play possession by possession football mm-hmm. and not get too ahead of yourself, whether you're winning or losing. 100%. You can't get too out of your body because it's, it's so easy for if the Chiefs get the ball first, the Chiefs score, if you have a turnover early, the Chiefs score, to abandon the run game with the weapons that you have. Mm-hmm. But then you're going to try to win a shootout in the Super Bowl against Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. Not a good idea. Exactly. So it's, it's you. You got to. You know, it's really. It's really hard with a team with this little experience everywhere. But the, I mean, outside Lane Johnson, Jason Kelsey, but quarterback, wide receiver, running back, coach, everybody. This is their first. <laughs> like you know, yeah. this is their first go around. You can't get too beside yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't do anything stupid. Don't, mm-hmm. You know, third and five. Don't you know, no dumb holdings or yes, exactly. you know, don't do any. Please, if Patrick Mahomes is going out of bounds, let him. Like, yes. Don't do let anything him, stupid <laughs> that'll get you behind the eight ball. Because exactly. with the last thing the Eagles want to happen, especially from someone like myself mm-hmm. who wants a really good game, the last thing we want to see happen is something stupid happen early, like football always does, mm-hmm. like a muff punt, and the Eagles get spooked. And that inexperienced show. And it don't got to be for a long time. No. It could be for seven game minutes. Mm-hmm. And that could be the difference between winning a Super Bowl and losing a Super Bowl. So. 100%. So, just to piggyback off of what you said, man, I think it is very important for this Eagles roster not to look, not even roster, the offense, not to look at the secondary and be like, all right, we'll drop it back 40 times because they can't guard us. Right. Do I think they can guard AJ Brown? Absolutely not. Do I think they can guard Devontae Smith? Absolutely not. No, sir. But... Like we just said, <laughs> they have the best player ever, and he does not need to be on the football field. The beauty of football is when you have a ba- ba- uh, when you have a football player as great as Patrick Mahomes, he can't play both sides of the ball. Basketball, LeBron James, Kobe, Steph, always on the court. Mm-hmm. Football, you can keep him on the sideline for ten game minutes, and like we said, that ankle hurt. That ankle get cold. Yeah. He can't really move like he's supposed to. He, he he dropped back and he can't plant on his throw like he's supposed to, so the ball ain't got that zip. All that is going to play into your advantage. Listen, so 35 minute halftime. We oh my gosh, we yes. get ball at half. Exactly. Another 10, 15 minutes exactly. drive on top of that. You know, a couple timeouts, you know, really extend exactly. the time that he is on the bench because yeah. you don't, like you, like it's the same, but you don't want to get in the shootout because, as you have said, we've said this in the past couple shows, y'all go get those, but. The best player, the best quarterback they played all season is Trevor Lawrence. Mm-hmm. Now, Trevor Lawrence is a dog. Shout out to the Prince. But he is no Patrick Mahomes. No. <laughs> and when you haven't seen a Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen on his great weeks or a Burrow, Burrow yeah. when you haven't seen one of those three, you ain't seen the Phantom yet. Hey, listen. <laughs> hey, you just, you just ain't seen the Phantom yet, man. It's, it's just a little different. <laughs> And, and I hope they are taking this with the uh, with the seriousness it takes. Shout out Brand Ayuk yeah. for giving them something to really grab onto mm-hmm. so they can lock in. Yes. Because the last thing I want to see is, you know, listen, it's been a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Maybe he feeling real good. He come out first quarter and do some Mahomes shit. Mm-hmm. I don't want that to get, you know. But like you said, we don't want to be deer in headlights at any point in the Super Bowl. Exactly. And it happens to a lot of people. Yes. You know, Tom Brady, best quarterback ever. I watched Tom Brady take a safety first play in the Super Bowl. <laughs> it happens. You know it happens. Shout out Tom for sure. Tom we'll Brady you. retired. We'll get to you later. Yeah. We'll get to you we'll in just a second after this. After Mahomes. After, 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 after the best player ever. Yeah. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> but... We don't have to sit here too long because we have done two Super Bowl breakdowns. So, yeah, like I said, go get episode. Uh, this is episode 18, so episode 17 and 16. We talked about the Super Bowl in detail on both of those episodes. But I trust you, Jalen Hurts. I trust you, Jalen Hurts. I really do. I think if anybody else was the quarterback of this team besides like a bro, besides one of those, if any other third-year quarterback in the NFL was the quarterback of one of these teams, of the Eagles, I don't know if I would even give them a chance. I don't care about this roster. That's how much faith I have in Patrick Mahomes. That roster doesn't scare me when it's Patrick Mahomes. But because of how you have carried yourself from the moment I've seen you at Alabama, 
I just really believe you got the intangibles that really make a difference. And I know, you know, as the draft comes around, we'll get into a little bit more of the Will Levis, Levi or whatever his name is, from Kentucky, <laughs> or the Zach Wilsons of the world and things yeah. like that. And they they get in these they get in the off season from the end of February to the beginning of to the end of April, right before the draft, and they start talking about these intangibles that these quarterbacks have, and they're usually a certain color, and it's always leadership, and you're so smart, yeah. and you're this and that. Struggles to read coverage is not a fast no one, processor. <laughs> As great, as great as a man you are, forget football player, as a great as of a man you are, as a great of a leader you are. And Nick Saban was your coach, and Nick Saban vouches for you. Every time you hear Nick Saban talk about Jalen Hurt, he raves about him. Yep. You never heard about that during the draft process. Nope. You didn't hear about this the past two years. It just as they started winning, it was like, oh, Jalen Hurts is this great guy. Yeah. Jalen Hurts is this He's calm coach, guy. Coach's son. Coach's son. <laughs> oh, Oh, now, now that's important. So <laughs> I say all that to he say he's a running back. <laughs> now he's a coach's son. <laughs> it's so cool. Man, he used to be a running back. Now he's a coach's son that can read defense and Listen, carry himself well. Can't, can't throw ten yards. Wait, got two good receivers. All of a sudden, hey, <laughs> one of the best deep ball throws in the league. Now. He just he's figured it out, I guess. <laughs> so I I'm happy. I love that the Super Bowl is a great is a week apart because it gave you time for your shoulder to heal and for Patrick's ankle to heal. So we will get you guys as close to 100% as you can be in week 20 of the season. So I'm very excited for this game. And I will say, lastly, to the penalties. The refs do a phenomenal job in the NFL of staying out of the Super Bowl. Yeah. So as long as you don't do anything that is overtly obvious, right, yeah. they're not really going to call it. Yep. So like Isha Sandberg, you guys are young. A lot of you are inexperienced, haven't been in this moment. Don't let the moment get too big. The Eagles will not let the – if they don't let the moment get too big yeah. and Jalen Hurts keeps that locker room even, they got a path to victory. For sure. But before we get into our picks, on the Eagles side of the – oh, no, Chiefs side of the ball, is how are you attacking this Eagles defense? Because it's, it's a defense. <laughs> it's, it's for real. If it's, oh, not, yeah. if it's not San Francisco, yeah, it's close. So so certain games are match, – so matchups in the NFL are super important. Yes. Because – Unlike the NBA where you can just throw out a scheme, mm -hmm. like just completely trash it, let's do something else. Yeah. It's a lot harder to do that in the NFL. So schemes hang around teams for a super long time. Yes. So this game is going to be Travis Kelsey, Isaiah Pacheco, uh, Kadarius Tony if he's healthy, Miko. This is going to be an old school Andy Reid, mm -hmm. quick screen, right. option, get the ball out of hands, move, move, move. Taking advantage of how actually good the Eagles' defense is, mm -hmm. how aggressive they are, how quickly they get to the ball, taking advantage of that. And I think that's what uh, Ayuk was alluding to when he's talking about exposing them in different ways, where you're going to take advantage of how good they really are, of how fast Hassan Reddick wants to get to the mm -hmm. ball, how fast, how eager they are to play in this ball. Yeah. You're going to see a lot of misdirection. You're going to see a lot of moving people here. Of course, you always get a bunch of pre stat motion, but I think it'll be – Short pass, short pass. We're going to get everything up. And then Kadarius Tony, Miko, MBS, when it's time, mm -hmm. they'll know. Yes, I agree. So I have a, I've been wanting to ask you this question. And we have been talking nonstop about the Eagles holding the ball, making sure Patrick Mahomes isn't on the field. But Isaiah has been toting that rock. Man. Wow, yeah. He has been toting that yeah. rock. And McKinnon is great out the backfield, a quick jet sweep, a quick screen, right. um, a quick great. swing pass, yep. all of those things. And he's great in pass coverage. In, yes, uh, pass, in uh, pass uh, protection. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So my question to you is the way they throw the ball and the way Patrick Mahomes is able to complete short passes like it is a run, yeah. do you – Drop back 50 times, 52 times, 55 times, and just live with that? Or do you say, Patrick, we're going to let you throw the ball about 38 to 42 times, but we're going to run this ball 15, 20 times because we want the Eagles off the field as well. Because if we can get up 10 to 0, we're not confident in their ability right. to play from behind. So I think they're still going to run the ball mm -hmm. because first the Chiefs offensive line is much, much more improved than people. I mean, everyone says, everyone talked about how good of a pass uh, protection team they are, mm -hmm. but the biggest improvement I saw was their ability to run the ball when they really needed to, and you saw that when Mahomes went out and they get the ninety-eight yard drive with Trey Henry, where they're really just mowing the clock, handoff, handoff, screen, 
Travis Kelsey out route, mm-hmm. things like that, and you look up, it's 99 yards and a touchdown. Yeah. So I would love to see them do that a lot earlier because what the last thing you want to do, especially against a defense this good, when they have had weeks to prepare for you, second best all-time sack defense is what Tom Brady and Ray Moss had to do or Tom Brady and Wes Welker the second time had to do is, all right, now they know we need to drop back and pass 50, 60 times. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, if you have to, it's not a bad option because of Mahomes. <laughs> but I would still rather, you know, especially with them haven't seen the ghost pull up yet. <laughs> I would rather them have to go fuck it, Patrick Mahomes mode, right. second half, mm-hmm. as opposed to off jump. Yes. Because if you, if you wait till the second half, we're not going to have a half, a 45 and a half time so just, for them to put the slideshow up yeah. of, oh, this is what they're doing. Exactly. If, you know, you're balanced, 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 and when the game gets close, as they're known to do, you can put the ball in your best player's mm-hmm. hand. And for a quarter and a half, if we just going to have to drop back and pass, fuck it. We just got to drop back and pass. Mm-hmm. And you saw that a lot with the Patriots Super Bowls where Tom Brady, the Eagles Super Bowl the second time, 500 yards. The, the Falcons Super Bowl was down a million points. Mm-hmm. He threw the ball this whole second half. So exactly. I would rather early see if we can strike balance because that could be the difference late where – Third and five, third and four, they think, you know, da da da, it's a draw or something. Yes. Uh, things like that could come into play later where I would rather try to start balance. Okay. And, you know, in case of emergency, mm-hmm. fuck it, he's the GOAT. Like, exactly. I agree. I I definitely think that is a superpower you save. Yeah. Is, all right, we're not going to come out and that be our game plan. Yeah, we finna drop back 50 times today. Because sometimes the Chiefs really go into the game and it's like, oh, they dropping back 50 times. That's what it is. Because yeah. they know you can't stop them. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's their game plan because I do think part of what we were just saying about the Eagles defense is how eager they are to get to the ball. Part of exposing that is milking them. It is false. It's milking the, milking the clock, short pass, five-yard run, five-yard pass, five-yard out, let Travis catch it in the open field, get a couple yards, get the ball uh, to Tony or Miko in the open field, get him a couple uh, yards after the catch. Yeah. All right, now we're going to go shot, shot, shot. All right, now we're going to go all past this one drive. And then we can get them to bite on the double move. We can get them to bite on the fake screen go or anything like that. That is how you attack them super eagle, uh, eager, eagle, eager, 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 eager. There you go. There you go. My bad. (laughs) So we in for a treat, man. If you are not by your TV bar on 630 on a Sunday, you got an issue. Yeah, no, it's going to be crazy. And and like you said. Unless you're work. Yeah, I'm going to be at work. But I'm going to be in front of a bunch exactly. of TVs. But like you said, be on the lookout. Man, listen. Okay, so last year we made a, I made a Super Bowl prediction mm-hmm. where I thought Odell was going to score. Yes. He was going to do number one. Yes. And, and he was right about that. I was. We got it on set. You know, we did it. Yes. Um, I see a Travis Kelsey double move going for 60. Okay. I see a Travis Kelsey okay. go, double move going for 60. But I see it happening really late in the mm-hmm. game. Like, okay. like one of those, okay. oh, no. Like, oh, no. Yeah, yeah like, I, I really think for this Super Bowl to go Kansas City's mm-hmm. way, the way it needs to go, it's going to take a GOAT performance out of Travis. Yes, I agree. Uh, Mahomes and Andy Reid. And Chris Jones, obviously. And Chris Jones. Mm-hmm. And I think that'll be it. I think Mahomes and the Chiefs and Andy Reid will be able to eat up space underneath mm-hmm. for so long that Slay's going to put his foot in the ground to go get one. Right. And Travis is going to turn around. around. Okay, perfect. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right. So my prediction is a sixty-yard <laughs> run. Jesus Christ! By Jay Hurts. That's nuts. <laughs> Read option with the lead blocker. Jesus. They sell on the run because I don't think they run them too much. I yeah. don't think they run them too much, but I think they catch them at the mm-hmm. right time and Jalen Hurts takes it sixty. Jesus. And I, uh, I agree with you. I think and it's Jason, towards the end of the game. And Jason Kelsey, Kelsey pulling around. <laughs> yes. Oh Jason Kelsey pulling around, knock one of them little rookie ass corners <laughs> out the way, and Jalen Hurts to the crib for sixty. <laughs> Jason Kelsey is joking. Listen, man. Shout I'm, out Jason Kelsey, man. What is the what is the middle linebacker's name for the Chiefs? I forget his name. He's a great player. Um, Bolton. Bolton, yeah. Nick Bolton, listen, Nick. <laughs> Hope you've been eating your veggies this week, Nick. Hope you've been eating your weeds, dude. <laughs> because, listen, Trey Greenlaw is a hell of a player. Hell of a player. Hell of a linebacker. He saw Jason Kelsey swing out there on that pull. And won no problem with him. No parts. Listen, Nick Bolton, you going to have to. Listen, can't make this a Super Bowl. You can't make a business decision. You cannot. You got uh, you got you got thirty five weeks to prepare for next season. And somebody <laughs> gonna have to take on Jason Kelsey when he pulled, bro. And it might be two people got to take him on. Honestly, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. So, boy, the time is now. <laughs> Here we go. 
Super Bowl. What Super Bowl is this? 56? 56? I ain't even thought about what Super Bowl this was. Like. They start, they, they messed up the logos. Nobody mm -hmm. there no more. Bruh, the, they stopped doing the Roman numerals or something, didn't they? Yeah, and that was just a LVI. Bruh, what does that mean? <laughs> Seven. 57. 57. All yeah. right, good, good shit. I'm yeah. glad I got a smart partner. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to tell you that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Super Bowl 57. The picks are coming in now. Ish, who do you have? Kansas City Chiefs, Philadelphia Eagles, Arizona, and Arizona. I got the Chiefs 31-24. All right, that sounds like a great game. Yeah. I have the Eagles. Sorry, Patrick Mahomes. I know you're going to make me regret this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I have the Eagles. Yeah, let me preface this. I just can't figure this out. I just can't. I have the Eagles 34-28 mm. in a phenomenal game. Mm -hmm. Um I'm leaning towards 42-38, but I know Super Bowls start off a little slow sometimes, yeah. so I, I, it'll probably pick up around the end of the first It'd quarter. It'd be 3-0 at the end of the exactly. first quarter. So, <laughs> I think we're in for a great game. Lastly, who do you have for Super Bowl MVP? I'm going Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey, I love that pick. I am going, since I picked the uh, Eagles, I'm going Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. But with a very small chance, to, I think I said this a few weeks ago, I, Darius Slay. Mm -hmm. I think if Darius Slay can have a big game, get a pick, yeah. fumble recovery, something around those lines, sure. 12 tackles, four or five pass breakups, yeah. and a big one like on Kelsey at the end of the game oh, or something, yeah. if he can get it. If yeah. Jalen Hurts doesn't put up some crazy numbers. That's a fact. So, to some sad notes, especially for Ish. Yeah, to some, as I was saying, some very, very sad notes. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Brady, after 23 seasons, is done playing football. He has officially retired, and I, a message I loved how he said, yo, you get one long retirement message. I'm not doing that again. Y'all know how I feel. Yeah. Um, and just kind of started getting emotional towards the end, had to wrap it up. Um, has been doing, had a great podcast with Bill Belichick um, and a couple others. Robert Gronkowski stopped in, Patrick Mahomes stopped in, just to give him his flowers, which, of course, he deserves. He said he is going to take a break from everything and not come to Fox until the season, the 2025 season, basically, which mm -hmm. I think is a great idea. For um, sure. So, I say some hate. ish. Um, I am going on a rant later about um the Grammys and Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> so just so y'all stick around for that. Um. So here is your rant time okay. for Tom Brady. So I want to start this by saying, the what Nick Wright said about Brady, uh, like the end of his career, really, really changed the way how I felt about him retiring. He said, like, as the greatest ever to do something. He felt an obligation to do it as long as he could. And I see that in Brady, and we see that with LeBron, too. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about LeBron a little later. But, man, like, he, he was in the NFL 23 years. He was in the NFL. He, he spent more time in the NFL than he did not in the NFL. It's crazy. From, from birth to high school, both to college, he spent more time being a NFL quarterback than living his life. And he really gave everything he had to football. Yes. Every ounce of him he gave to football. And as a Patriot fan who became, you know, who I saw all the different phases of Tom Brady where for a while like we would never win again. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh shit, is this nigga the GOAT? And it was like, oh yeah, this nigga's definitely the GOAT. Yeah. It's it's been I could never we can never say thank you enough. For sure. I agree. For the for the the changes he he was, and this is not something that we're gonna see again. Mm -hmm. no. and, and it's and it's very important that we saw Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, Rogers, yes, yes, at yes. people who were at one point his contemporaries, fall off even before he did. So it doesn't change how we see quarterbacks in the future because you're not gonna see a 43, 44 year old quarterback change teams. Lead the NFL in passing and win the Super Bowl his first year. No, it's just it's just not. And he should have won that MVP when Rodgers won it. He should have won. That and MVP. he he for sure should have won that MVP. But you know what I was thinking about, and I wish in sports media we lended more credence to this. Tom Brady was voted number one by his peers like seven or eight times on the top one hundred list, and the minute he retires, follow us on Twitter. Uh, it took me like 15 minutes to find it, like post a video, but I posted the Ray Lewis video. Mm -hmm. And that, and I remember when I was watching as a kid, that was really one of the first times I realized how 
lucky we were to be watching what we were because we'll never see anything like it. Like Brock Purdy was like, oh my God, he may be like the greatest mm -hmm. underdog story ever, but he's not. Tom Brady was so good. He was the best underdog story ever. And he was so good, we had to stop calling him an underdog. <laughs> Six round draft pick, one ninety nine or ninety eight, and then even when he starts winning, it's Dallas because he's not winning the the you know Peyton's got the MVPs, mm -hmm. Peyton's got the All Pros, mm -hmm. Peyton has all these records. He has Marvin Harrison, and we never really got the other side of it. And for a long time, it looked like okay, he'll be Joe Montana, mm -hmm. you know, and then about 2012, 2013 hit. <laughs> Then it was like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna have another Hall of Fame career, <laughs> and this time I'm gonna break a bunch of NFL records. And even even as he retired, with uh, what we consider one of his worst seasons, especially the team record, his numbers are still better than the early parts of his years. It's it's just, man, salute Tom Brady, man, for real, salute Tom. Help me fall in love with this game for sure, for sure. So, I. I'm going to go on a similar rant to Braun, so I'll keep this short um, with Braun later. So I'll keep this short. I uh, I have a lot of respect for athletes, but I have a, a whole different respect for the GOAT. And I don't have to name them. You know who they are. We mention them all the time. But I have such a good, uh, deep respect for them because of how much they have to sacrifice of their life to entertain us. Mm -hmm. And Tom Brady said something that I've never ever in my life thought about. Um, he said, I don't want to give my kids this disease I have. And it almost brought me, like it got chills over my body because it's like, this isn't something I I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I literally have to do this. Yeah. My mind, my body, my soul is like, I have to do this because this is who I am. Yep. And it's so, it's so strong and he feels so strongly about it. And he's so strict. Like he said, he didn't have, he never drank a beer during the season. He ate like a, a this, like a. This nigga was eating avocado ice cream. Bro, he was eating avocado ice cream. He barely ate. He was getting massages every yep. day, working on muscles you don't. We're throwing hundreds and hundreds getting of passes. Crazy. Getting called crazy. Getting called a maniac. Getting called crazy. I Losing remember, his bro. wife. Like, all of these things to be great at something. And he called it a disease because, like, he can't help it. It's not something, like, he can control. It's not something that he is like, ugh, I got to do this. It's like, nah, like, this is what I do. Yeah, football. And football it's who, shows, Tom. It's who I am. It's not yeah. this chose. Like you said, it's not... This chose me. I did not choose this. This chose me. This was meant for me, bro. Mm -hmm. And it's just a different type of dedication, a different type of excellence, a different type of motivation that these athletes, that these great athletes display. And, dog, he won more Super Bowls than any other franchise ever. Than any other team. Like, that is so... That's so stupid, bro. Wow. It is stupid to say out loud. I'm young enough to remember when Pittsburgh was title town. Like, Pittsburgh was title town. San Francisco was like, y'all can't fuck with us. Yeah. Brady won more championships than all of them combined, bro. I'm not combined. I'm sorry. Not all of them. Than all of them. Like, it was... Like you say, it was part of the reason I fell in love with football. And he's part of the reason I learned football. Yeah. Was watching him was because... I was like, yo, what does it mean he knows everything before the snap? Like, what does that mean? So I had to go do my research and really understand, like, how he works pre-snap and what, what he's looking at and how you can notice the coverage by this. And it's just so much we don't see of athletes. We just see the product. We just see the finished product. And we don't see that Tom Brady was in the building at 6 in the morning and he left the building at 11 o'clock every single night because he, he went and got early work in, early film study and went to practice, did the normal film study and then stayed after to get some more work with his receivers and then watch more film. Yeah, You don't understand that. You just see him on the field and it's like, oh, why can't he throw an incompletion? Why can't he lose? Why, does he, why is he in the AFC Championship every year? And it's because of the work in between when the lights cut off. 
Yeah, it, when the lights are off. Yeah, that's the difference. And so, like it said, bro, I just want to say thank you to Tom Brady for the sacrifice, for the the entertainment, for all of that. Because like this game isn't what it is without you. You will be missed. We'll be glad to have you in the booth with Fox in two years because you will be an amazing broadcast. Nobody's nobody knows a game like you. So well, I my just, kids are gonna fucking hate me. <laughs> so my I just <laughs> yo, ten years from now we're gonna be watching a Fox game, kids. Talking about whatever, whoever the MVP now, Touch and home. Tom Brady, <laughs> and Tom Brady gonna be calling the game. We're like, that nigga ain't shit. That nigga in the booth though. That nigga in the booth. He could probably still go down there and swing that shit. <laughs> no cap, man. You made us believe that you could really play the fifty, bro. Like, bro, bro he's forty five. You made us believe you were gonna play the fifty years old. Bro. Damn, he he's forty five. And him retiring was, was a, a shock. Surprise. It was a shock to the sports. I read world. the news and I was like, "What?" I screamed. I was like, "Taylor, Tom Brady retired." Oh. I was like, and, <laughs> and what the legacy that Tom Brady leaves by leaves behind him is kind of the same thing that that made me fall in love with the Kobe legacy and what he did was being able to put your whole life into being great at something. And doing whatever it takes, like, in the same way that we talk about Mahomes is the best ever because he's an answer. He's a solution mm -hmm. to, oh, uh, we don't got no receivers. We don't got this and that. And Tom Brady, without athleticism, without those same gifts, mm -hmm. found a way to be the best solution ever. Exactly. We don't have any Pro Bowl wide receivers or we got this undrafted quarterback from some small school, 5'11", some Julian Edelman guy. All right, let's make him second all-time ever in postseason receptions. Number one defense, Jalen Ramsey, Josh Allen, uh, all who's oh, A.J. Bouye, all that. Tw six, seven stitches in hand. Okay. Chris Hogan go for 200. Like, it, it's, it's, it's unthinkable the things that we really saw. Yes. 28-3. We ain't even... And, impossible. Literally impossible. I like impossible. Bro, I remember watching every every snap of that game. Ish watches that game still. I still I watch that game a couple I watch that game like a movie. I watch that game every couple weeks. Because it's such it, that game in particular, and I and I'm excited as we move forward when we look back at that game, we really forget the level of play that was on display in that game yeah. from a lot of different people, including coaching staff. Brian Flores, uh, Bill Belichick, Josh McDaniels versus Kyle Shanahan, Dan Quinn. I forget who the uh, who the defense coach for the uh, Falcons was, but it was amazing start to finish, and it's impossible. It's impo It's not. It doesn't even make sense in hindsight how it happened. No, with no Gronk. No, <laughs> with no Gronk <laughs> to come back from man. So. Lastly, I'll say this. <laughs> Similar to how it's very funny that <laughs> the reason people like Mike ain't the GOAT is because everybody he plays against sucked for some reason. No, that's for, funny. For 12 years, everybody sucked. Niggas, be like, niggas be like, yo, for 12 years, nobody could. <laughs> nobody could. Nobody, yeah. nobody, nobody could. There was no <laughs> hoopers in the whole world. Everybody on the Bulls was good, but everybody else in the NBA sucked. That's what they say about Mike. <laughs> Brady, it was... They just be cheating. They just be cheating. They just be cheating. It was crack the hell to they just be cheating. Yeah. So greatness is when you literally cannot explain. It's literally unexplainable. So again, thank you, Tom Brady, um, for your sacrifice, your dedication. Let me ask you. What's, are amazing. what's your favorite what's your favorite Brady moment? I'm I said I'd ask you that first. Um <laughs> my favorite Brady moment is prob no, not probably. It's the undefeated season. Because I was, that was one of the first seasons I was really watching football yeah. as a kid. And, you know, as a kid, you think you know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. Damn, what's but I knew something different was happening. I knew something different was yeah. happening because every week it was just like, damn, Randy Moss opened again? Yeah. Damn, Brady got another 300. Damn, four touchdowns, five touchdowns, six touchdowns. Oh, that's an all-time record. Oh, that makes sense because yeah. he took 80 touchdowns. <laughs> so, it, uh, seeing that season... Seeing that season was my that whole season was my favorite Brady moment because that was the that was the year that made me a fan because like everybody hates the Patriots unless yeah. you're a part of Patriots Nation you you hate the Patriots but I never was that person because it's real hard for me to hate greatness it's real hard for me to hate somebody that's dedicated to life to something just because I don't like you because you're so good that's weird to me yeah. so 
it was one of the first seasons. It was the first season I was like, oh, I'm a fan of this dude. Yeah. This is special. This is special. I remember, man, I, listen, uh, I remember the undefeated season. So that was my first. Well, I was like, like early in my Patriots fan. We were really good, man. And listen, Wes Walker, to this day, boy, ooh, we <laughs> listen, you better, ooh, you better not let me see you somewhere, but I can't believe you dropped that pass. <laughs> like, you, we, like, man, we're one, we were one catch away. One catch away? One catch away. One but catch away. I think my favorite Brady, uh, I, of course, outside of to the 20 to 3 Super Bowl, uh, which is one of my personal five best life moments. Um, <laughs> He's not lying. He's talking. I, I'm not lying. <laughs> but uh, the Broncos come back. The tw- I think it was down 24 and a half. Mm-hmm. Bunch of fumbles. Von Miller was everywhere. <laughs> and I remember this was during the time where we really, I, you know, we didn't know was this kind of it going to be it for Brady? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like you got the rings, been a while. Mm-hmm. And in that game, it was like a, a predictor for how the next decade was going to go in New England. Mm-hmm. That Edelman, two touchdowns, Gronk was everywhere. The defense made plays, and Tom Brady let a comeback that, at the time, was impossible. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching the game. It was getting that what shit. Was it? I think 2014, maybe? 2014. Okay. And, no, I think it was 13. I think 13. it was 13, okay. because we didn't go to Super Bowl that year. Okay. It was 13. Yeah, it was a year Peyton got the shit mm-hmm. kicked out of him. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I and I remember watching that game, and we won the game, and I was like, man, this nigga might be something different. <laughs> Because I think that was like, a Super Bowl. I think that was MVP. Yeah, it was like MVP. Yeah. I was like, man, this nigga might be I know what really you're something yeah, different right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. And then the next year we beat the Legion of Boom. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Again, thank you, Brady. Thank, thank you. you. It will it yeah. will never, ever, ever, ever I, be another, bro. Are we gonna end it like this? I got I still to this day got a Tom Brady fat head up on my wall. Also factual information. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you, Tom. So from one league to another. The NBA trade deadline, Braun, I promise we'll get to you. Um, but we got to get to these trades, man. This yeah. is this was insane, bro. The, the NBA going to sell a storyline, man. And the trade deadline be hyped every year, but this was ridiculous. So, this shit got crazy. <laughs> uh, this shit got super crazy. So we'll start off with the first thing, which we, um, unfortunately, we lost the show. i um, so sorry. This should be episode 19, but the show we recorded Sunday, which was live. So if you got to listen to it live, shout out to you. Um, but we talked about Kyrie and where he should go for 35 minutes for him to go to the Mavericks the moment we left the show. <laughs> hey, I don't think it's a good fit. <laughs> I got in my car. Kyrie's there. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, like, so we were saying, I was, the whole time I was like, I don't think he's going to LA, but I think LA would be pretty much guarantee LA going to the championship. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, the Dallas fit scared me, but I wanted to see it mm-hmm. because what you mean? Like, Kyrie and Luka just going to cook back and forth for 48 minutes? Of course I want to Listen, watch. man. Hey. What you mean? Hey. So, we'll just go ahead and start there. Played last night, won last night. Looked great. Twenty, I think he scored 24 last night. Yep. So 24, 5, and 5. Yes, on very efficient shooting. So, what you think? How you feel? Um, don't get too many predictions because we got to get through the rest of the West first. But yeah. how do you feel about this initially for the Mavericks and Luka? I am much more sold now than I was when we were talking about on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Because the more I think about it, the the less it felt like. So so what is what the Mavericks Luka needed to avoid was turning him into heart. Mm-hmm. Where we're gonna, you know, we're gonna play the numbers game. We're gonna shoot forty threes. We're gonna spread pick and roll sixty times, and we're gonna hope, you know, we get hot enough to win. But last year, the Mavericks figured something out. They said, "Yo, man, this nigga not in the best of shape." A <laughs> <laughs> so, hundred games of this, not gonna work. Not gonna work. <laughs> so Jason Kidd said, "Fuck it, we gonna put him in the post." And he became one of the best post scorers in the NBA. So now I think, like, if they would have made this trade last year, mm-hmm. mid pick and roll every play, I'd be a much more skeptical. Of course. But with Luka loving to play out of the post, how much he has, being able to play at a slower pace, mm-hmm. Josh Green, the, the people around him are suddenly good players. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very excited to see them play together because I think they're going to be really good. Okay. So, I agree with you. I think Luka not being a major pick and roll, like a 
every possession pick and roll yeah. player is very important. We talked about that a few weeks ago about how moving him to the mid post is genius, yeah. and all they need is somebody they lost in Jalen Brunson last year, and then they upgraded Jalen Brunson to Kyrie Irving. Exactly. But last year, they didn't have defense. Didn't have defense. This year, they don't have defense, and they got rid of their best perimeter yeah. defender. So that is what scares me about yeah. this. Do I think they can beat a couple teams in the West? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Which is why I want to see that Phoenix series. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah. But I am scared for them as far as defensively. But the thing is, the game slows down so much in the playoffs that it's going to be so hard to stop them offensively mm -hmm. for four games yeah. because – they have two of probably the what you say seven best scorers in the league. That'd be a generous. Man. Man, I'm being generous. That'd be a generous See, to the rest. Like, of the I could too. probably yeah. say five if I wanted to, yeah. but we'll, Kyrie leading the fourth quarter in points. That's what I'm saying. For sure, say five. But it, it, it's so it's what's it, it, when we're thinking about this. I was really looking at it like okay, you know, Katie and Kyrie on the Nets were amazing. Mm -hmm. But what they didn't have and what they kind of got from Harden was someone who was also going to create for the for the others, mm -hmm. for the Jets. Now, in Dallas, Luka can do that, too. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, and Kyrie, of course, is a great passer. I mean, we saw it yesterday. He fit in their system like a glove because, I mean, we talked about it when Harden was doing it. I think Kyrie can do bigger role for 40 minutes if he wanted to. I do too. And listen, he, he fit right into that system. Mm -hmm. Like a glove, Kawhi and PG, hounding him the whole night, walked in there like it was nothing. Like, yeah. Hey, first day out. First day out. He'll beat and, the Clippers on the road. And I think uh, I would be picking them to go to the finals, no question, if they would have got a big. If they would have got a big to really run protect to where Luka not being able to yeah. play defense wouldn't matter. Because you can't – it's real hard to win in the NBA with two liabilities on defense. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Kyrie is this, just some awful defender. And I don't really feel that way about Luka. But they're not good defenders. Right. And you can't – they are – by the way the NBA is played, they are bad defenders. Kyrie is just small. Like, it's really nothing Kyrie can do about it. He's just small. Yeah. So, even if he does go see a Steph, Steph – he's going to cook Steph. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But Steph is just going to cook him right back because right. they just can't – Kawhi can shoot over. Kawhi can shoot over. over. Exactly. Yeah. Braun is Braun. Like, yeah. it's just not many – um, it's not many really guys he can really just stop. And Luka just doesn't have the foot speed to keep up with these guys and him having to – constantly get brought up in that pick and roll is exhausting for him. Yeah. But that is where Kyrie does come into play with taking the ball out of his hands, walking the ball up, letting Luka yeah. go to the mid post mm -hmm. and running the offense through yeah. that. I think something else nobody, I haven't seen a lot of people mention, is Jason Kidd is an excellent coach. And Jason That's Kidd is Jason Kidd, if y'all don't know who the fuck Jason Kidd is. Jason One of the Kidd, best yeah. point guards yeah. ever. So if anybody can figure out how to make an offense work for two point guards with very, actually different games, they're both yeah. incredible scorers, but they score the ball very differently. If anybody can figure out how to make this work, it's him and Steve Kirk. Don't know why I said Steve Kirk, but shout out Steve Kirk. <laughs> but, yeah, Steve Kirk figured out. Yeah. Steve Kirk could definitely figure out. Like, that's a safe assumption. Oh, my God. <laughs> but super safe assumption. Yeah. Um, so him and Steve Kirk can figure it out, but Steve Kirk is not the coach. So Jason Kidd will definitely figure this out. I 100% believe that. I am only worried about their defense. Yeah. If I see – and the regular season don't matter to me. That's the issue yeah. because nobody plays defense in the regular season, and that's what scares me is that when you get to the playoffs and these teams really start locking up. It's like, oh, shit, I, they can play defense? <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, shit. It's like, are y'all going to be able to play defense yeah. once y'all start locking up? Are y'all going to run zones, a lot of matchup yeah. zones and things of that nature, let uh, JaVel kind of just control the middle. So if you do get beat, hey, I will Christian say this. Wood as well. Hey, JaVel looked good last night, though. Yes. Hey, JaVel looked really good JaVel last night. JaVel is the man. perfect piece over there. Come yeah. on, he has to do is catch and block shots. Yeah. So I And there's still time with the buyout market. Yes, so, so Dwayne Detman is on the buyout market. Yeah. But Dwayne Detman is on the buyout market right now, and Serge Ibaka is on the buyout Surge, market right yeah. now. So if you I'm, Surge, I'm Dallas, praying the Warriors get Serge, yeah. but if they don't, I think the Mavericks will be a excellent place for Serge to go. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Jason Kidd because Jason Kidd is one of the best coaches in the league, mm -hmm. and last year's playoffs proved that versus the Suns, the adjustments that they made to high Luka to oh gosh, yes. protect them mm -hmm. from what the Suns were trying to do. So. I really want to, I man, I got to, you know, I got to see it. 
I got to see. So, and if the West, so so the day the Kyrie trade got made, so pre KD trade, mm -hmm. I thought they would be my favorite to come out the West. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we'll talk Golden State later, whether or not they'll make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, but they would be my favorite, barring Golden State not making. I think the Golden State are with the ninth seed now. Ninth seed, yeah, playing yeah. right now. So, speaking of the Suns, <laughs> no, we're gonna get into. So, the Suns made a trade for arguably the best player in the NBA. Yep. Um, <laughs> if you don't know his name, his name is Kevin Durant. He <laughs> was traded for Mikel Bridges and uh, Cam Johnson. So. The roster consists of Chris Paul, a starting lineup of Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, DeAndre Ayton, and either uh, Sarich, TJ Warren, or Tory Gray. What's that other big man they got? The, the white guy. I like him. That's Sarich. Oh, are you talking about uh, Jock, Jock Landel? Yeah, Landel. Landel. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so um, they that is their team. Mm -hmm. The issue with the Suns for me is their bench. Right. But my question to you is, do you think that matters? Yes and no. Okay. So I don't think it's going to matter um, if Monty Williams is going to keep Devin Booker and KD on the court at all times, which is 1 million percent possible. But if he's going to think that he's going to stroll out Chris Paul in the mid-second quarter with, you know, these four guys mm -hmm. against a playoff team because that's Chris Paul – Shit isn't is gonna get sideways really mm -hmm. quickly for that team, yes. and I think Chris Paul is still the weak link on that team. I still think DeAndre Ayton would be, but I think if they are gonna keep Kevin Durant or Devin Booker on the court at all times, they're gonna at least be a good team in those stretches mm -hmm. because they'll have someone to turn to. I think their biggest problem is gonna be on defense, though. I am, well, yes, that's where I, that's where yeah. I was going. So I. Love the trade, first off. Love the trade. We will get into the Nets and your ownership and how you should sell that team in a couple minutes. Hey, listen, you got what you wanted. <laughs> hey, man, you, you got, got what you wanted. wanted. All your superstars are gone. You got what you wanted. Hey, listen, Jump. you mm. win. <laughs> you win. You won. You threw your temper tantrum. Now you won and all your players are gone. So congratulations. <laughs> I can't wait to see the national TV schedule next year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hey, hey, let's see them ticket sales next year. Oh, let's you. see them ticket sales next year. Let's see who's, let's see who's selling the tickets. And hey, you know what's crazy? What? They don't have a first. <laughs> you know, you know, it's crazy. Next year, they don't got their first either. <laughs> <laughs> shout out, shout out to the Nets organization. Hey, shout out to the Rockets, man. All Kyrie's fault though. Yeah. Um, so why, why would Kyrie make them trade all their picks to the Rockets? <laughs> <laughs> so the Phoenix Suns. I love the trade because I love anytime two superstars. And yes, I think Devin Booker is a superstar. Anytime two superstars get paired up, that is a good thing to happen. Yeah, ish. Brought up a fantastic point. As long as he staggers KD and books minutes, mm -hmm. them their bench being weak won't be the biggest of deals. Because I think what he's going to do is stagger Booker and eight minutes and CPs and KD. KD's minutes. Right, yeah. I think that's your best bet. Mm -hmm. Although Kiss Chris Paul and Aiton have great chemistry. Chris Paul running that pick and roll with KD a little bit different. That's and Chris that, Paul yeah. is a wizard in the yeah. pick and roll. Regardless of how you feel about him at this age, he's a wizard in the pick yeah. and roll. So I do think this can work, mm -hmm. but defensively it scares me yeah. because you're asking a lot of Devin Booker and CP without Mikael Bridges. Listen, listen, Mikael Bridges is as good as advertised. Bro, they bro. don't make the finals without Mikael Bridges. No. So, and. DeAndre Ayton ain't the rim protector you call him on. Now, KD is. KD has become a – that's one of the biggest advancements of his game in these past five to six years is his ability to protect the rim. But you still need him to go get that 30. Yep. And he has been hurting his lower body a lot, and you, so you don't want him jumping too much with all them, do, with all them freak athletes and bumping his knee, bumping his hey, leg. Hey, listen, I love wrong. KD, but, you know, get out the West. <laughs> if you go be that rim protector – Somebody gonna punch on you, yeah. even if you doing your job. Somebody, somebody. John just, gonna come. Listen, it just might be John. <laughs> it just might be John that day. You John just might gonna be come through, man. So listen, John Wiggins, Braun, AD, <laughs> like you. It's a lot of them, man. Yeah, Kyrie, <laughs> but uh, now Kyrie too, bro. Damn. So I, damn Kyrie. I do love the move. I really do love the move. 
As far as a favorite, I'm not sure. I gotta see it work. It's real hard for me to just, you know, ESPN's favorite thing is doing. Are they the favorite now? Yeah. It's real hard for me to say that right now, just because I haven't seen them play one second of basketball together, and KD has been hurt for the past three weeks, and he's probably be out for another two. So I do have to see this come together. But on paper, I do like this. Yeah. I. It would be different, like if. There was a 2017 Warriors in the West right now, yeah. but there's not. I think the top six teams are so evenly matched, yeah. and not this top six by record-wise, the top six of who I think are as far as the Clippers, Warriors, Mavericks, Lakers, um, Nuggets, and Memphis, and Phoenix, so seven teams. Yeah. Those seven teams, I think, are the real threats. I think everybody else is just fighting to be important and get some television time right. <laughs> in the first round. So... <laughs> And the crazy thing is, one of those seven, two of those seven teams won't make it out of the first round. That's a fact. <laughs> so, yeah. so I do think that this can work, but it's matchup based because yeah. you don't. I don't know if they want to see the Mavericks. Bro. Dog, the Mavericks defensively. I don't know if they want to see the Mavericks, bro. Like, do they want to see the Nuggets? Do they want to see the Nuggets, bro? Like, do, seriously, do they want to see the Nuggets where KD and DeAndre Ayton is going to have to guard Jokic? Do they want to see the Warriors, bro? Like, I'm. See do they want to see? It's the it's. Bro, it's you got to. Are you gonna put Chris Paul in a hundred pick and rolls? You're asking. Listen, you're asking a lot out of Chris Paul. You're asking a lot out of these. You're asking a lot out of Chris Paul, bro. And the book, man. You're asking. And the so book. The book is not a good defender. I don't want you to think he is. He's not. He's a. Uh, a C plus defender. Right, he gonna try. He gonna try. I'm not saying D book. It's one thing like yeah. like Trey Young don't give no type of effort on defense, right. and he a bad defender. So that's just a terrible combination. D book gonna get an effort, but he's just not a great defender. And the whole and the whole left by Mikael Bridges is so important because what Mikael Bridges brought to your defense and offense, you did not replace. No. <laughs> On offense, Mikael Bridges is extremely efficient, and he's also one of the best cutters in the league. Mm -hmm. So having him next to Chris Paul amplified Chris Paul's value mm -hmm. because he was able to get so many greasy points. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Cam Johnson. They were both great cutters, both great defenders. And shooters. All and great shooters. shooters. You removing Mikael Bridges from that, somebody still needs to go guard Seth Curry. Because if you're only if you're if your goal is gonna be to outscore all these teams, you got a great chance. Mm-hmm. But, bro, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. Listen, it's, niggas get paid, too. It's a hard thing to ask for four games, bro. And I love the book. <laughs> boy, I love, boy, I love some KD. Y'all outscored Luka and Kyrie? Shit. Y'all just going to outscore them. Y'all just going to outright outscore them. Shit. <laughs> so I, or, even worse, fuck around playing the Clippers the first round. And they got PG and Kawhi. Locking up on both of them. And they're still scoring. And I, I agree. Kevin Durant is better than both of them. I don't want you to think oh, that. Oh, Kevin Durant is definitely better than no, both of them. That's, hey, that's Kevin Durant. Yeah, that's yeah. Kevin Durant. Let's not get too, for the new people, let's not get too crazy. No. Nah, that's like, still Kevin Durant. That is Kevin Durant. But, like I said <laughs> last night, that's still Chris Paul. <laughs> We've never seen a loser like Chris Paul before. What Chris Paul has done in the avenue of just destroying championship teams is unparalleled. <laughs> And I would be really worried if they didn't have Chris Paul. <laughs> but it's just something about him being meant to lose. Like, the universe can't move past that point unless he does. It's like the Loki thing. It's an absolute point. You gotta lose. And I don't know what he did. <laughs> but, you know, I serve a mighty God. <laughs> I serve a powerful God. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I can see it now, bro. So, I do, I do love this pick again. I love this trade again. But man, it's tough, bro. The, and I'll say this: if the West, nothing about the West really changed. Like the Lakers didn't really make too many moves. Mm -hmm. uh, Clippers didn't make any moves because them getting Eric Gordon was an excellent move. If that, nobody really made any moves, and this was just all that happened. And you and like it was like really coming down to you and the Mavericks. It would be like I would feel way more comfortable. Right. But the war you're gonna have to go through just to get to the Western Conference Finals to see Braun or to see Steph or to see Kyrie and Luca, like, yeah, do you have? That's where the bench comes into play. Yeah. Do yeah. you have yeah. those games where KD can only play 33 minutes? Yeah. Where if Brooke only has to play 35 minutes, or where KD don't gotta, uh, KD don't gotta sh score 34 and then go protect the rim all game yeah. and help DeAndre Hayden? Out. Like, are you gonna have that? Are you gonna be able to trust Chris Paul on the defense at the end of games? Yeah. So, I don't know, bro. Like, I I love it. Like, I'm not saying I don't love it, but 
it's hard to predict for me to really give a finite prediction until I see this all on paper and see it all. Yeah, we're, going, we're definitely going to need the bracket, but... Man, yeah, that bracket's going to be important. But the opportunity, you know, listen, listen, shout out. <laughs> shout, I'm going to shout out Jocko and I'm going to shout out Michael Irvin, too. Because there is a path ahead of these players. It looks like a mountain. as Goliath. <laughs> but then I want y'all to know, that mountain is not there <laughs> to scare you. That mountain is an opportunity because someone is going to have the chance to say in one playoff run, mm -hmm. I sent Braun, KD, and Giannis home. Or I sent Steph, Braun, KD, Luka, Kyrie, and Giannis home. Or fucking Embiid or wh whatever, wh whatever team get out, the, get out that East. Man, listen, it's it's gonna be a lot of gonna be a lot of checks written this year. Man. Boy, it's gonna be a lot of checks Man. written this year. Man. And so, listen, you know, you know who should read I wanna shout out Ja. Cause boy, you better be resting up, man. And we listen, on this show, we didn't talk about it. Mm -mm. No, we never said nothing about it. We I actually commended you because I think you should have that much confidence. You shouldn't be worried about nobody in the way. <laughs> But you should be now, my nigga. Hey, listen, <laughs> you should be now. You niggas better be real locked in. Because, you know, y'all in that early stage, ain't nobody been paid yet. Mm -hmm. So we can have we can have the Brandon Clarks, mm -hmm. JJJ, we can have Desmond Bay, we got that loser nigga. We can have all we can pay all of them. Dylan Brooks is who he's talking about. Yeah. Shout out to Dylan Brooks. Loser ass nigga. But um <laughs> in a couple years, you want two fifty, right? We need a reason why. You don't want to. You don't want to be grippling and all right. We give you this two fifty, but somebody gotta go. Because if you're on the doorstep, if you're in the Western Conference Finals, like the Mavs was last year, your owner might take that swing. Mm -hmm. say, Fuck it, we'll go. We'll go get this player, or I'll eat this tax bill. Mm -hmm. Like the Warriors are about to mm -hmm. for one hundred sixty million. But if you just been first round a couple mm -hmm. times. Y'all a small market. And you got your contract. John got his contract. Yeah. But nobody else has. You know, maybe I don't want to give JJJ $150 million. And then what happens after that? Yeah. And now you stuck there by yourself because you signed up for you. So you there for years. Mm -hmm. You there for years regardless. Yeah. Now, is Memphis an attractive place to come play? Because y'all a bunch of young niggas. Them vets that really going to make an impact on your team don't want to come deal with them. Nope. They don't. They spat, listen, they shit off the court. That matters. That matter. That, that immature shit you got going on. And I'm not going to speak on that shit they said after the Pacers game because I don't know. You said it was cap. They said it's not. Yeah. I'm not going to speak on it. Nah, Jock ja crazy as fuck. I wasn't trying to. And they, they said we couldn't corroborate the port. He said that's cap. That's not how that works. Those are not. Those two are not the same thing, my nigga. They didn't say it wasn't true. They said we couldn't corroborate. <laughs> so, Man. to one team in LA. We'll go Clippers first just because we're going to stand on Lakers and Clippers. Okay. They got Bones Highland and Eric Gordon. How do you feel about that? Got rid of Luke Kennard, the best shooter, but replaced him with another shooter and a great backup point guard. Our start point guard. Okay. They got rid of Reggie, ja Reggie Jackson, too, which I was sad about. I love Reggie Jackson. I don't like Bones Highland on this team. Why? But I think Bones is a great player. I do, too. Yeah. I just think I, I really liked him in Denver, and I feel like – well, I think he should come off the bench if he's going if, if to continue to play 100%. because I – you know, the Clippers are, you know, I was thinking this when the, when the Mavericks, man. The Clippers are real serious. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with Kawhi play. Uh -huh. The Clippers are really fucking serious. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. yo, chill. Like, lock <laughs> yeah. it. Like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And Bones Island isn't that type of guy. No, not like, even a little. Bit. So, not even a fucking move. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little, it's a little worrisome, like, how he'll fit into what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, Kawhi, two dribbles, left handed hook, <laughs> like, <laughs> running back on defense. <laughs> Um, but I really like Eric Gordon to replace Luke Kennard. Easy 20 points a game. He's guaranteed 20 points a game. <laughs> um, uh, I like him replacing Luke Kennard because Luke Kennard just – he just can't be on the court versus certain people. Bro, he just cannot be. <laughs> and 10 years ago, man, Luke Kennard would have been a life boy, godsend for boy, a Boy, you teams. think Steve Novak was some shit. Luke oh, Kennard yeah. and oh. on them next teams would have been god. Oh, crazy. <laughs> But he just, you know, he happened last night, you know, you just play transition defense and then the entire Dallas Mavericks organization tell everybody to go to the baseline because you had to pick Kyrie up. Like, niggas on the bench, like, yo, clear it out. <laughs> you know, you just can't have it, especially on a team with this many good defenders. Mm -hmm. It's like the Steph thing where, like, you know, even, you know, Steph wasn't a terrible defender, yeah. but he's on the court with, you know, four elite defenders, mm -hmm. you're going to have to pick up a lot of slack. Yeah. But Luke Kennard is the same situation, but he's just a bad defender. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I pretty much agree with everything you said, bro. Like, I think Eric Gordon will be a great piece for them because I think any team needs shooters in this NBA, especially if yeah. you're in the West with all the shooters. I do disagree with you on the Bones Highland pick because I think what you said about them is very true. They're super serious. Yeah. I think he brings that and changes that, and I think they need that. Okay, yeah. I think I part of the that, reasons yeah. the Clippers have had their troubles is because, like, the pressure is really on them. And yeah. I think he comes in and loosens the pressure off of them for yeah. a little bit. I like and that. I think that's really important, even if it is for the 14, 14 to 24 minutes. Like, yeah. I think that little crossover, he don't get a little, uh, yeah. and then the behind the back yeah. pass. Bowles, Bowles is nice. Yeah, he Bowles is. That game. Or the little pass where you throw in and spin for no reason just yeah. to get the crowd involved, dancing back down the court. Yeah. I think that loosens their team up, that's and they that. really need that. Yeah. So that is why I do think he'll help him. Where I do think it'll – his game might take a step back is he is excellent in the pick and roll. He's not an ISO, I'm about to break you down, cook right. you, score guy. He is more so in the pick and roll. Now, he can break you down, but he is more, he's great out of the pick and roll. Yeah. And they don't really have a big for him to run it like they did with Jokic. Right. So I do think that'll, that might hinder his game and it'll be an adjustment for him to have a, have to run a pro, pick and roll with a PG or run a pick and roll with a Kawhi or Zubac. Yeah. But I do think he brings a little much needed energy to their team right. because yeah. I think that is what the Clippers are lacking. Yeah, you know, I agree. I definitely agree. Now, to the other team in LA, man, they got they got some pieces. They got D'Angelo, the Lakers, of course. Yeah. They got D'Angelo Russell. Got rid of Russell Westbrook. Uh, Russell Westbrook should be brought out by Utah in the next couple days. Uh, free, he'll probably sign with the hey, Clippers or the Bulls. And I like Miami. Mean, you, you know, you, you, you like how they ain't announced the buyout because mm -hmm. y'all will fucking pay Russ. Y'all will pay me. Y'all pay, that pay me. All that shit y'all niggas put me through. Yeah, I need all mine. Oh, I need all oh, mine. mine. And before I continue with this, I do want to commend Russ on how he's handled himself the past two years. Yeah. Because you have taken a lot of unnecessary slander. You are the only Lakers superstar that has been available since he's got there. Yep. You came off the bench as who you are. Like we y'all niggas can make all the fun of off make fun of him all you want to. That is Russell fucking Westbrook, dog. He That's is Westbrook. he is a superstar, average a triple double for three straight years, one of the 10, 15 best point guards we've ever seen in this league, one of the most athletic players we've ever seen in this league. Like that's a real nigga, bro. So yeah. to for him to handle himself in that way and him to keep his head up. And yeah, y'all saw the clips of him not really being happy to jump around at the beginning of the game. But my nigga, he didn't like them niggas, bro. Yeah. All y'all niggas did was talk shit about him and he had to go sit on the bench when he had never done that before. And so, you know why I love that clip? You know why I love that? I, I was so happy to see that clip because mm -hmm. niggas was shitting on Westbrook. That same game, all them niggas was jumping around. Westbrook was the best player. Yes. Westbrook was still the, the, the yes. one nigga out there trying to win that game. Trying his fucking hardest top to bottom. Mm -hmm. He had like 28 points. You see the video. 27, I, 8 and 9, I think. Do you see the video of Kyrie like saying what's up to him before the game? Greatness arrived early. Westbrook is greatness. Yes. Westbrook is greatness. All the shit I, I didn't said about Westbrook, all the shit anybody said about Westbrook. At the end of the day, Westbrook is a future first ballot, no doubt, Hall of Famer. Exactly. One of the best players we've ever seen. Yes. And at the end of the day, Nick escape, go to him for some shit. But don't worry, Westbrook. Time time reveal all. Time reveals. Oh, Tyler. so I do hope you go to Miami and shake the East up a little bit because I do think that forcing Miami will help. Um, I think the Clippers, he yeah. helps the Clippers. One of those two teams, I think those are the two teams he'll probably look at going to. I think he helps both of those teams tremendously um, because they aren't like, they don't need shooting. They just right. need a, a point guard because um, Kyle Lowry is not it. And, Shout out Kyle Lowry. Um, Bones still, Island is not starting to press. Shout out Kyle Lowry still getting the bag. So, and John Wall going back to the Clippers, I mean, going back to the Rockets is hilarious. I'm sorry they did to that huge John Wall, but by God, that is so funny. So but he's probably going to get bought out, and I think he's going to go to Dallas or Phoenix. So, yeah. the Lakers, D'Angelo Ruster, uh, Jared Vanderbilt, Michael Beasley, mm -hmm. who else they got? Mo Bamba. Mo Bamba. And then they got Rui um, a couple weeks ago. How do you feel? I like it. Mm -hmm. I, I like it. I, I like what they needed because no, uh, so I like what they I like what they did because they understand no matter what, it don't matter what we do, if AD not healthy, it's not going to matter. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to rip my roster up top to bottom, trade every other pick that we haven't traded for you niggas, and then AD turn an ankle, and we lose in the first round again. Mm -hmm. But what they did was they built a team where if LeBron James and AD are going to play and play well, they should be competitive. Because they have the pieces around them to be competitive now with Michael Beasley, 
uh, with D'Lo playing the point, defense, shooting, Vanderbilt's a good fit. Mobamba's length, size, shooting. They really needed that. I didn't like them trading Thomas Bryant, but I know that his minutes were going to go to Mobamba anyway. But I really like that roster. It's very easy for a Laker fan, you know, to be like, man, we didn't get KD, we didn't get Kyrie. But you weren't never going to get any of them. I hate to break it to you. I hate to be the one to let you know that, no, the Lakers were never getting Kevin Durant. They all were never getting Kyrie. Yeah. Even if you thought you had the best deal for Kyrie, the nigga said he wasn't trading him there. So <laughs> it, was, it don't matter who y'all would have offered. Well, so, and I don't know what's up with AD. I know you saw the clip. Yeah, I don't know what's up with Brown. Bro. I don't know what's good with this nigga, but he, I, maybe, maybe he fucking knows too. That, dog, there's no more excuses. Yeah. And I know AD, listen, we talked about football earlier. We talked about Jalen Hurts. One ring, you a made man in the NFL. Mm -hmm. This is not the NFL. No. <laughs> AD, you are not a made man no. in the NBA. No. Secondly, you play with LeBron. So you definitely not a made man no. in the NBA. <laughs> no. You ain't even got back to the finals yet. So dog. I agree with you. Have I love you this. yet to win a playoff series in Los Angeles. I, that's factual information. I... 100% agree with you on, I like this a lot for the Lakers. I think what the Lakers were missing, they got. Right. I think they were missing shooting. I think they were missing defensive, defense. And I think they were missing key role players, quality role players. I think they got all of it. How they mesh, how they work together, all depends on AD's health. And that is why I'm still scared. Because I don't know what's wrong with AD. I don't know if the other night when Braun broke the record, if he was hurt. If somebody told I, him, I didn't move. know if he was. I thought he was. I thought he was emotional because I know some niggas be like quiet emotion. Mm -hmm. Where eighty, and, and, and I really believe this. Some niggas for real just want to enjoy this moment. Mm -hmm. You know, eighty want to sit on the bench and look around and everybody love him, bro, mm -hmm. doing that shit. I can understand that. But that nigga, <laughs> bro, that didn't look like that, that nigga look. Pissed. That didn't look like that because I'm the type of guy like I'll sit back and just take the moment yeah. and be like, man, this is fucking beautiful. Right, but like. Nah. That nigga looked disinterested. He looked disinterested. Like, I don't want to fucking be here. And, and, and uh, did you catch a clip? When you, did you, he, LeBron was like, yo, I love you. Yeah. It was like, and I don't know if that was like, I don't know if him and Russ got an argument, if him and the coach got an argument. Yeah. I don't know what it was, bro, but something hasn't looked right for him for a while now. Since he got back from this injury, he hasn't looked great. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I don't know if... This is something we're going to continue to see, or if this trade and this new this new roster will get a him a pep in his step, and they'll be the team we think they can right. be if he yeah. is who he is supposed to be. Because I have no doubt Ron is going to show up as long as he's healthy. Now his foot is a little messed up. Does worry about me at this old age yeah. about his foot being messed up, that foot, ankle, all of that being messed right. up, groin, yeah. all of those things. Anytime that happens with Ron, that scares me because that could that could really hinder him. But. The whole thing with the Lakers since they've been put together, we have been saying nonstop health. It it's all depends on their health. I still with the the roster they just had, I didn't mind their roster. Yeah. I said if they get to the playoffs, it's gonna be real hard to beat them if they're healthy. Mm -hmm. And I still feel the same exact way. I don't really know like a team right now that I'll be like, hell yeah, they're beating the Lakers, no doubt. Like if they're healthy. I don't really have a team. Now, of course, as I watch more basketball, as we get to the closest to the playoffs, I might have a team that I feel that way about. But right now, today, I don't really feel that way about a team. But if they're not healthy, that shit don't fucking matter. So, literally. And day one, when they got there, to our credit, the first thing we said is, they are going as far as AD going to take them. Yes. We've been saying that for four years, bro. They won a championship because AD was amazing, amazing. in the bubble. Amazing. Whether or not people want to say it existed or if it happened for real, like Whatever. the moon landing. It happened. You know. <laughs> like the moon landing. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. And he was amazing in that month. But look, look, think about how crazy hindsight is. Coming off that bubble championship, it would have been it, it would been corny to even suggest that Giannis and Jokic were better players than mm -hmm. It would be impossible. And be. And be. Now it's like not even a no question. You couldn't even you couldn't even put an argument together right now mm -hmm. of the him him being better than those players. And it's it's man, it's sad. It's it's, sad. it's really sad. It's sad, man. So but to the Lakers roster, I do think they fit together well. I think they'll mm -hmm. run a lineup of probably D'Angelo, Beasley, Braun, A D and Mobamba. Mm -hmm. I would probably say is their lineup. And if they want to go small, then move AD to the five, bring Vanderbilt, LeBron play four, yeah. Vanderbilt play the three. Uh, Vanderbilt isn't a 
best shooter, but he's a great defender, very strappy, very hard, a type of guy you want on your team, and a type of guy with two older superstars, and AD not that old, but he might as well be 40 years old, yeah. and Braun actually is old. With two older superstars, you want a guy doing the dirty work, which yeah. is what Patrick Beverly was trying to do, but Patrick Beverly 6'2", so. <laughs> that's how that's much you can do. AD body is like if LeBron, like AD body got LeBron minutes on it. Exactly. <laughs> AD move how Fact. LeBron should move some Facts. Like. So, I've been wanting to ask you this and answer this question myself. How do you think D'Angelo Russell feels with LeBron? I think he'll feel. I think he'll fit good. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what's up with D'Lo. D'Lo, uh, he's up for a contract. Timberwolves didn't want to give him thirty plus million. They was like, "Fuck it, if he's gonna walk, we might as well get something for him." But I think D'Lo's getting long in the tooth. He's already wasn't the most athletic point guard. I think he'll be successful on this team. But it's important that men, you know, listen. They, they got to say it's like. <laughs> your, your old boss such an asshole until you meet your new one. And uh, somebody will need to play kind of that Westbrook role of you're not AD, you're not LeBron, you're going to have to take a step back, and it's going to be D'Lo. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he'll come off the bench, but it'll be a lot of nights where D'Lo's three for five, mm -hmm. four for seven. Mm -hmm. And a, four of those shots are spot up, spot up three. So. Yeah. He has to get used to that. He has to get used to not playing point guard because yeah. that is Braun's role. And, hey, look, you're a great point guard, excellent passer, but you are no LeBron James. When it's crazy. Decision it's crazy. LeBron is still a better point guard than D'Lo. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's not even a question. Not even, nobody would even argue that. I don't even know if D'Lo <laughs> argued that, to be honest. So, He's still a better point guard. And it, it's uh, – shout out Pat Bev. Shout out Pat Bev. Going I'm, back to I'm, Minnesota. I'm real sad you got traded, but you're back in Minnesota, so I know you're going to happen. And they need you in Minnesota. They do. So this is what I would say about D'Lo. I tweeted right after they got traded is D'Lo don't take basketball seriously enough to play LeBron. That's a fucking fact. That's such a good tweet. And I 100% believe that. I do believe that. But if there is anybody to make him take basketball seriously enough to play LeBron, it is LeBron. It's LeBron. So could D'Lo have had an attitude in Minnesota? Because look, bro, look. Look at D'Lo's career. He's been losing since he got in the league. Off the jump. He's tired of this shit, bro. It. Like, it's like my nigga. I'm rich regardless. Yeah. I'm going to get paid next I'm year. I'm not, I'm not a scrub. I'm, I'm not, still D'Lo. I'm still D'Lo. Even if I got to go to Charlotte and get 25-30, I can go get it somewhere. Yeah. If I got to go to Chicago when they, because we don't know what's going on a while, so yeah. I can go get it somewhere even if I got to be sorry again. So I'm tired of this bullshit. I'm not going to play no defense. I'm going to shoot where I want to. And we got Cat and Ant who – who I know are better than me, but like, I don't really care. At this point, I want to do what I want. Yep. So, could that be his attitude? Oh, also, the coach of Minnesota was terrible. So, there's no telling what that coach, how he felt about that coach, how he felt about the roster, how he felt about all of that. That's so, maybe he gets back to L.A. and gets in that nice L.A. sun, gets in that nice L.A. weather. He see Braun, he feel that L.A. energy in that crowd, and he completely changed. And that's very well can happen. But what I've seen from D'Lo in the past two years, I don't know if I like it. I really don't. I, you know what? I think he sold me. And and, and, and what did, I'm gonna give D'Lo the benefit of the doubt that I gave Andrew Wiggins, because like we said when Wiggins got traded, it's really easy not to give a fuck in Minnesota. <laughs> like just plain and simple, it's so easy to be like, man, fuck this shit. Yeah, like, plain and simple. But like D'Lo's like, all right, I'm in the Western Conference. I'm gonna go out here. All right, I'm gonna kill myself for 82 games. Mm -hmm. So we go home in the first round, mm -hmm. like you know. Coming back to LA where he was drafted, you know, I, I'm very excited for that. Exactly. You know, let some time go and but you know, the newer Laker fans don't know why you were traded. Mm -hmm. You know, they just <laughs> remember, remember. But like these newer Laker fans, these broad Laker fans, they might not care. Might, you know? might not. They don't give a fuck. They don't, they don't, they don't give a fuck about New York. I promise. Like, <laughs> oh God. But you know, get a chance to redeem yourself. And you know what? I, I agree with the 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 up the silver line, like you said, mm -hmm. maybe he gets there and he's like, "Man, I got a I play with Braun. I got I a real opportunity. I got, I got a real opportunity." And, uh, because when he was in when he was in Brooklyn, he he really he was cooking, going crazy, and it, I was happy to see him because they were playing winning basketball. Mm -hmm. But you know, maybe he gets to LA. It's like you know, I got a real good opportunity. He, you know, he could wake up tomorrow. I was like, "Damn, I was just in Minnesota." That's what I would, I would tell that nigga every day. Yo, you was just in, Minnesota. Just in Minnesota. And one more thing, bro. I just brought up the coach. Was D'Lo put in a position this season? Right. So, like, did he really fit next to Ant and Cat and go there? Did he really fit next to that? that was that really <laughs> you know what? Like, let's, let's cut D'Lo so, some slack. Let's cut D'Lo some slack. That nigga D'Lo was living in Minnesota, and then Rudy Gobert joined his team. <laughs> like, 
Like, him and Ben. <laughs> like, on top of living in Minnesota, Rudy Gobert decided to join your team. Like, I get it, D'Lo. So I that's, fucking get it. Like, I don't know. That's another thing. Like, all of this I just have to see because basketball, basketball is so chemistry-oriented, matchup-based. So it's... A lot of it's gonna come down to the seating, and a lot of it's gonna come down to what I see. But That's do I think this can work? Absolutely, bro. If the Lakers, if you would have told me these were the Lakers, the moves the Lakers made three weeks ago, I would have been like, oh, everybody should be happy. Yeah, everybody should be happy. Exactly. Everybody that's a Lakers fan should yeah. be happy today with what the moves you're making. Y'all were not getting KD, bro. No, that was never happening, y'all. Bro. Y'all were never happening. Sean Marks was Sean Marks was not sending them over there. Also, real quick, Mobamba, I love that pickup um, because if AD cannot play, say AD. Like, seriously, can't even play in the playoffs, period. Like, he can't play. You guys still have a threat of a team against some of these teams in the West to win the playoff series or two yeah. to give time for AD to come back or something. If he's right. I really like Mo Bamba. Huge upside potential. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy he got out of Orlando, where he never really got a chance to – I mean, even where he was, was drafted. a lot of rookies better than him. Honestly. Even when he got drafted, he they had they had, they had Max Nikola Nuk- Vucevic mm-hmm. the offseason right yeah. after. Mm-hmm. So there was never a point where he really was able to – Grow, grow for real. So you know, <laughs> listen, LA lights bright. <laughs> you know, you <laughs> listen. Every, every to every good, there's a bad. You didn't have time. You didn't have room to grow in Orlando. You don't have time to grow now. You do not. But also to the shooter Michael Beasley, um, and to Vanderbilt. <laughs> Utah a lot different, dude. Utah a lot. Different. Hey, them lights in Utah a lot dimmer. <laughs> that pressure in Utah don't exist. No. <laughs> that pressure in Minnesota don't so, really That's exist. why it's so hard to, to do. To grade, predict LA grade, team. Yeah. Like, to grade these trades for LeBron midseason, because, like, the, the gold standard for me, looking back, is J.R. Smith and Mont Shumpert. Mm-hmm. That was the perfect in-season trade mm-hmm. because Mont Shumpert was defense and a little shooting mm-hmm. here and there, but he was athletic enough to cut and still be on the court. But J.R. Smith is uh was just so unconscious. Mm-hmm. Pressure was never going to face him. Nope. I guess for better or worse, in moments, just don't <laughs> register in his mind. Like, he, you know, he's just out here hooping. Yeah, like, I just do this shit. You know, we, we're going to see really, we, we may see really early or really late, you know, time tells all what Malik Beasley, what Jared Vanderbilt, mm-hmm. what these players really, you know, listen. Hey, hey, it's not. it has not been a playoff game in Los Angeles for a very long time. I'd hate for you to be the reason it's not another one. <laughs> I would hate Look. So hey, ask Westbrook. Hey, ask Danny Green. Hey, get downhill. Real ask fast. Danny Green. Hey, ask Danny Green. No, they were sending threats to his okay. family. They traded Danny Green and he blew his knee out. It's been all downhill since. Like, so it's been all bad since he missed that shot. <laughs> <laughs> so to one uh, big man that hasn't gotten a chance to grow to another one. The second round pick in the draft two years ago has been traded to the Detroit Pistons for Sadiq Bey, who went to the Hawks, and then the Warriors got five draft picks and then traded the five draft picks for and Kevin Knox, who they had for two seconds, to Portland to get a player they had last year and Gary Payton the second. So basically, the Warriors drafted the second pick in the draft to get Gary Payton the second. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know what? Let me let me. Just, let I'm me gonna go. let it gloat for thirty seconds, and then oh, let me get right. Let me get right, man, because this one <laughs> this one might be my magnum opus for real. Let me make sure. <laughs> let me make sure I'm right because this one right here, this might be my this might be my crowning achievement, boy. Because the minute they drafted James Wise, like, oh, that show was stupid. I knew from the jump. The minute they drafted this, like, oh, that's stupid. That's so dumb. And I was driving here today, and I was like, man. How ironic is it that both Mellows were drafted one place away from changing the NBA? One, because think about this. They draft LaMelo, now you do not have to pay Poole. Because you can just have LaMelo do what Poole is already doing. But then we don't even need to go get another super big wing, like Otto Porter or something like that. Because look at that, God made this nigga 6'9". Perfect replacement Clay's, you know, couple last years, Steph a couple last years. The two timeline things kind of works out because fuck it, this Lamelo he's all star. They might be listen, Lamelo and Kaminga in open court together, man. But outside of the Lamelo thing, I'm more relieved for James Wiseman because, and we talked about this with uh, Westbrook. You know, James Wiseman didn't pick himself second. He didn't pick himself there. James Wiseman was the best basketball player on every team he played for Mm -hmm. for his entire life. And then he joined a team where he was the eighth option. Mm -hmm. 
And it is a hard adjustment. And the Warriors don't run a cookie cutter system where anybody can just pick up and play. So he was asked to do things that he's never, you know, he, he did not know how to do. To add into that, that he went to college for 30 minutes because of his eligibility mm -hmm. and COVID, missed years. He was he was facing a lot. And then on top of that, he tore his meniscus his rookie year. Exactly. So he got still, hurt again this year? He's still really a rookie. So I, I'm more relieved for him to get to a situation like Detroit where he can get a big role on offense. He can really slide into a place that needs him, mm -hmm. where he can make these rookie mistakes. Yep. Because that is the problem with the two-timeline system is – these players need to make mistakes, mm -hmm. and they're going to. Yeah. And you, there's no way to guard against it. There are going to be bad nights. And when you're on the Detroit Pistons, that can happen. Yes. But when you're competing for a championship like the Warriors are, it's really hard for someone like Steve Kerr or Draymond or Steph Curry to allow you to make these mistakes for a couple weeks while you figure it out. Because mm -hmm. we don't have this time. Like, Steph Curry's 35. I don't got time for you to figure out how to be a good player in the NBA, especially where you were drafted. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm happy he left. Uh, I'm super happy GP2 was back. Um, it, essentially, you drafted Gary Payton the second, second overall, <laughs> which is, you know, listen, I really like GP2's defense. I probably wouldn't use the second overall pick in him. But I'll say this, it depends what draft. <laughs> it depends. Listen, it depends really what does. draft. It really does depend. Because the Hawks picked that nigga who can't dribble with his left hand. I forget <laughs> what that nigga name is. He's still on the team. He can't dribble with his fucking left hand. He's from Virginia. God, what is that boy's name? DeAndre Hunter. DeAndre Hunter. Yeah, he's shit. Um, but you know, I'm glad it's. I'm glad it's over. So I'm glad we can bury this one as uh, <laughs> we can call this one, boys. Um, I'll say this. First and foremost, I'm very happy for James Wiseman because I don't like when rookies don't even get a chance to be great. Like, at least don't exactly. get a chance to be great. Yeah. I will also say I am going to give 80% of the blame to the Warriors for drafting him, but 20% I'll leave to the unknown because if he doesn't get hurt. Right. And he does get that full year where the Warriors sucked, um, and Steph was the best I've ever seen him. Man, some of the most fun I've had watching basketball in my yeah. life was watching him lose all those games and Steph shoot. <laughs> no, 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 no. Man, that shit was so yeah, much fun. This but, league is hard, right? Yeah, 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 he was cooking. Was so, nuts. um, I think he averaged forty in March. I think it was that. I think it was, <laughs> he was going. It was stupid. Bro. <laughs> but watching that. And if he would have got to play that full year with Steph, and then next year, like well, last year, the year they won the championship, actually understood the system, got a full offseason in training camp, it's no telling what he can be. And maybe he could have been that seven foot big presence we would have, they would have um, needed. Right. But hey, that's Kanye said, I guess we'll never know. We'll never so, know. <laughs> so on to the trade, uh, get, getting Gary and Peyton back. So you're looking at the Warriors, and if you are the Warriors, and you're looking at your team, and you're like, all right, our. Seven, really with eight. I don't know if you have any Warriors games you watched in the last uh, month, but Kaminga is here. Oh no 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 no! Kaminga no. has. Oh no no! League pass. I I, I watch at least one game in okay. Yeah, yeah, I did too. Uh, Kaminga is fucking here. So yeah. with that eight man rotation, you're looking at it like, all right, we got the shooters. Mm -hmm. We got. We're almost there with the defense. Our defense is our only thing we're worried about. Yeah. Nobody's fucking worried about scoring the ball yeah. for the Warriors. Um, Brian Scott, Clay Thompson. Looking like Clay Thompson again. Hey, listen, I was 12 threes the other night. He had 36, 32 last night. Yep. Like he's quiet as kept. He's mm -hmm. coming back looking like Clay Thompson. Yeah. No staff nigga put that nigga flip that switch on. Nigga flip the switch. So you're looking at that and you're saying, all right, we can't get a Nick Claxton. Right. They were trying to get OG, but they OG and they'll be from uh, Raptors. From yeah. the Raptors, but they were asking for Kaminga and Moody and the picks, and Kaminga's not worth that. Yeah. So Especially when you don't know if he's going to be there for more than two years. So, yeah. you go back and you say, hmm, all right, well, our system is kind of hard to learn. And Gary Payton was an extremely important part of this last year and why mm -hmm. we did win the game, why, win the championship. And a lot of the Warriors players were saying if he doesn't come back from injury after that Memphis injury, yeah. I don't know if they would win that series. For sure. With the way he is able to play defense and he picks up 94 feet, and the way he is able to slash and play like he is seven feet tall, even though he's only 6'4", I'm kind of happy with where the Warriors are left. I'm, yeah, honestly, sure. I think they are better than they were yesterday. I really do. Oh, 1,000%. One, 1, and they have – so normally when teams make trades for specialists like GP2 mm -hmm. is, it's a, it's a big question on how effective they'll be because the team they're going to – 
may not be as well equipped as the team they're coming from. Exactly. Like Ben Simmons on the Nets right now is not worth nearly as much as he did when he had when he was with Kyrie and KD mm-hmm. because he could just be like, fuck it, I'm gonna play defense. Mm-hmm. GP two coming to a team with Steph Curry, mm-hmm. with Clay Thompson, with Jordan Poole, he can spit right back into the role he had last year. Mm-hmm. But the difference is they also have Dante DiVincenzo too. Yes. So when they do go to those bench minutes, even if our bench isn't, even if their bench isn't going to score necessarily, their offense can be their defense through their bench of just suffocating people and always having a player like that on the court at all times. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where even if you're not playing Dante and uh, GP. GP together, you can rotate them where there is always basically a Dante DiVincenzo mm-hmm. or a GP, and they bring different things where. D, uh, DD's a more of a, a spacer, can mm-hmm. shoot deeper, but GB2 is a much better cutter. Yes. So I think that they're much better, and I think the lineups that they can play are very interesting, but you know, they are really small. Super small. So, like we said, matchups are very important. Very important. And I've been saying, I've been saying for the past two years, I've been yelling at Ish about James Wiseman. I'm like, the reason they got James Wiseman is because of how small they were, bro. I was like, they're so small, it is exhausting to have to ask Draymond Green to do that for four straight playoff series. Um, and then Mooney, Mooney's only 6'9", but the front office is looking at it like, yo, we've been to five, six finals doing it. We've been to six finals doing it and won four championships. Doing yep. It. So, like... Hey, shout out Mooney, by the way. So, like, shout out to my dog Mooney. Shout so, out Mooney. And Mooney has only gotten better, by the way. Listen, so when they hang your fucking jersey up, <laughs> I'm a be there. Because when didn't nobody believe mm, I he, believe he did, bro. Last year I was I was pissed and boy you came through for me, bro. <laughs> they you, play now. you got a special place in my heart, five. I swear <laughs> to you. I know. Like, I'm just gonna be Dennis Rob. <laughs> oh god. I'm just gonna be Dennis Rob. <laughs> so so yeah, I really do like this move for the Warriors. I think their only issue now is just Hitting on a seven game win streak. That's all I need to see from them. Oh, Cause, yes. Because they've lost a lot of games that they shouldn't have. So it's like when you've lost 12 games you shouldn't have, and those 12 games will have you in the third seat, I'm not as worried about you. Because it's not like, damn, nobody can shoot no more. Right. It's just like, oh, they do the warrior shit late in games now, and now they, right. they can't come back from it. So it's like yeah. they've lost games where it's like they've been down 10 to the Rockets, and the Rockets come back in six minutes. And it's like that shit just not going to happen in the playoffs. So I'm expecting them when Steph gets, I think. They'll go or win a few games in the next few days, uh, in the next few weeks. But when Steph gets back, they'll really click and really gel. And I think if they can get, I don't, I they might not be able to get that six seed. But if they can get that six seed and they have to see Memphis or Dallas in the first round, I like them again. I like them against a lot of the West. That they, the Nuggets scare me more this year than they did last year because of how small we are. Be a leap to play a very big part in guarding Jokic last yep. year because he was able to stretch the floor so he made Jokic exhausted. Right. And it was just a body to throw on Jokic to give yep. Draymond a break, to give Draymond a moon a break. So that does scare me, but Kerr has started to prep for that. But that boy Kerr be coaching, bro. He started to prep for that by bringing Looney off the bench to stagger him and Draymond's minutes yeah. so they can just play the five and Draymond will yeah. just be the natural five. Because, like we said, you got four snipers on the court, and Andrew Wiggins plays bigger than he is. So it's, they, they are coming together, and I think the Warriors would just be right back in the mix. But, again, and I bro, Listen, I and I know I, I literally just said, man, the Warriors are small. Like, so what? Like, who cares? Bro, who cares? But for 10 years, they've been the smallest team in the league. Bro, bro. And, like, you know what? What makes the Warriors situation so different from other teams who are that small is other teams don't have Draymond Green. Because right. if you are going to throw the ball into the post for Draymond Green for two weeks, best of luck to you. Best of luck. Best of luck to best you, Best of luck to you. Because if you're going to beat them on the low post, which the – Back to back MVP of the league, arguably the best offensive big we've ever seen. Clinton do. Good luck. Who else gonna do it? Hey, good luck. Who else is going to do this? So yeah. I think I'm interested to see. Now, for the sake of me, I would like them to play the Mavericks and then play Phoenix and then play the Lakers, and I would like them to win all those series. Hey, because if he do that and go hey, get five hey, against Boston, hey, rest up. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. Rest up, thirty. Listen, you rest up, boy. Boy, he do that. Man, well, you got an opportunity, man, to do something really special. To do some real special shit. This, this, 
playoffs is going to be really because because I and you know we can we can we can still we can uh, kind of slide over to Braun mm-hmm. here of course but when uh, when Kyrie didn't go to L.A. I was like, man, LeBron, last greatest of all time chance just became a little smaller. Mm-hmm. And I will say this right now, as a Michael Jordan head, and, you know, I'm still willing to argue the score and shit. Michael Jordan got 10 scores. Out. We gotta get to it. This, this is about LeBron right now. But if LeBron break the all-time scoring record at 38 and win the championship. That shit is over with. That shit it's, is over with. It's over with. That I don't want to hear Michael Jordan's name again. Like, I mean, okay, I do, but like, it's over. That yeah, over. conversation it, is over. And, and, I, and he, he could finish with five. And yeah. I and I would be one. Listen, at 38, he's going to average 30 and win the championship through this West. Man. <laughs> I, I, I'd, be, I'd be willing to... I'd be willing to change caps. For but sure. If, <laughs> for sure. But if but 30 do the same... But thing. listen, but if 30 do it... We're talking. We're having different conversations. We're having a way different conversation. Because last year it was about we had to get Magic out of here. Mm-hmm. Listen, I love Magic. You know, cool, play with cream. Yeah, yeah, did his thing. You know. <laughs> well, listen, if Steph, it, especially coming off watching all these superstars bounce around one more time, Westbrook fifteen in five years, Kyrie I think fourteen in five years, Katie fourteen in seven years, Steph went five rings in one place. Zero trades, zero trades for us. Like, a, what would he? When, when is the last time Steph was mad enough to make news in Golden State? He hasn't. He literally never has. It, it's it, it's really different. That shit. Could, he got five, two Finals MVPs. Look, man. And he Look, got, man. listen. He if he if he got to go through KD, Braun, either Luca, Kyrie, or PG. Kawhi or third time MVP Jokic. Man. And uh, Terry on top, he might have to fucking sing on his own too. Man. Jesus. Alright. All right. <laughs> he might retire after that shit. Um, oh, God, that might be enough for him. But quiet this kept before we do jump uh into we're gonna do some quick hitter trades and then I'm gonna go on my random my problem. But uh the Warriors saved a lot of money by trading James and getting GB back. They saved thirty million in cap space, which is going to give them room to be able to re-sign Draymond. Yeah. Um so that was very important. But a couple quick hitters of, of the other trades. Uh, Mar- Martise Tybal went to the don't know if I pronounced your name wrong, but I did. Martise Tybal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, went to the Blazers. Um, Devontae Graham is on the Spurs. Mike Muscala got to the went to the Celtics, which is actually a very good yeah. piece for them. Good another big, stretch, yeah. another stretch big. Uh, Mason Pumley went to the Clippers, which is a very I good piece Mason for them Pumley, because yeah. they were small. He's sneaky athletic too. Yes, they were small, and they're not the team that can play small like the Warriors. That's exactly. not that. That's not their bag. So yeah. that was a very good piece. Um, as we mentioned, Patrick Beverly to the Orlando Magic from Obama. Um, and that was all that's really important. So we touched. Oh, and Jay Crowder to the Bucks, which was a great move for the Bucks. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a great move for the Bucks. Something Jay that Crowder joined the Ops. <laughs> <laughs> so that is great. So LeBron James. Yeah. Two nights ago, LeBron James became the all-time leading scorer in basketball history um, on a fadeaway jump shot on the left elbow. One of the moments I'll never forget watching. Um, I was genuinely excited for him to do that. It was I was I, I was I was certain he was gonna throw up his guy hook. I was, <laughs> I was, I was but for the game, I said I free throw line, left hand sky hook for the record. <laughs> and he did the one dribble. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way he better throw up a lefty hook. I think he wanted to. Yeah. But he knew he couldn't miss the shot. Exactly. And so he was like, I'm real deep for this sky hook. It's yeah. a shot I don't shoot. I think if he would have got one like caught a Caught a cut through the middle, he would have done it. Yeah, but because you know he is showing, he yeah, you know you yeah. know him. So, <laughs> he was practicing it before the game and shit. I yeah, it. <laughs> so shout out to that nigga. The, the headphones is crazy too. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw, but before the game, it was like six cameramen in the weight room when he was just working out three hours before the game. Yeah. Like, you a superstar, dog. It's different, bro. Um, it was beautiful to see your family at the game, which they're never at because I'm sure they would get harassed if they came to every game, so I understand. Yeah. Um, Hove, of course, was there. Wasn't surprised to see Hove. Mm-hmm. Um, Floyd was there. Denzel. So bro from Nike was there. The, yeah, uh, Phil Knight. So I do want to take the time because we mess with Bron a lot. Man, yeah. I have since I met him. I'm a Kobe dude. I'm Kobe to I die. Um, I love Kobe with everything in me. Um, so it was always Kobe's better than Braun. At this stage of my life, it's more so Kobe, Braun, and Mike are better than everybody. And right. if y'all think one of them is better, I don't really care because I don't think there's a real gap between them. Exactly. Um, I think if you replace all of their careers and put them all in the exact same era, they all kind of do the same thing. So I don't yeah. really think there's a big gap between them. 
But like you, it said, this is about Brian. I mess with you a lot, but, and I mess with Brian, Brian fans a lot, because they're just so easy to make mad. Yeah. But, bro, as we just said about Tom Brady, there will be another motherfucker like you, boy. Mm -hmm. That man is special beyond belief. Yeah. And unlike Brady, the complete opposite of Brady, everybody thought you was that nigga. Everybody. From 15 years old. You was getting called the chosen one. You gonna make you gonna play Akron on the map. Yep. You gonna be the next Mike. Niggas calling him the next Mike at 16, yo. Yep. At 16. People was in the league calling Kobe the next Mike. And they was calling Braun the next Mike in high school. In high school. 18 years old. The you the chosen game. one. The next the, the the stream for his high school game. Showing Kobe and Mike and Magic. And at the end, you know what that shit says? The next. The next. And they cut to LeBron in high school in warming high school. up. With turf tape on covering his tattoo. <laughs> um, chosen one tattoo on the back. And from day one, you have lived up to every single thing people have said about you, bro. You never had a scam. The worst thing you did was lie. <laughs> the worst thing you've done is just lie about shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's hilarious. Bro. You are... You're going to retire the all-time leading scorer by a wide margin. You're going to be top five in assists and top ten in rebounding. And if you play for another four years, you might be 40, 10, and 10, which means 40,000 points, 10,000 rebounds, 10,000 assists, which is fucking ridiculous. Nuts. You have been the example for 20 straight years. Now, there have been some in between. There have been the Kobe's and the Tim Duncan's and Katie. But you have sustained this level of prime basketball from year three to year 20. And you learned, you got your growing pains out. But year three, you took off and you have not looked back at all. You have been like a perfect role model. You've been a perfect athlete you have never cheated yourself which in turn means you have never cheated us every time Braun is on tv you know what the fuck you're gonna get every time Braun is in the playoffs you know what the fuck you're gonna get every time Braun is in the finals besides one time you know what the fuck you're gonna get you know it he never cheated anything he never cheated the process he never cheated the work he never cheated his teammates he never cheated his coaches never he showed up every single day bro my nigga we talk about, we make this joke a lot, but it's super important. I mention this right now. The nigga has a billion dollars, oh, yeah, bro. Bron's a billion. Bron has a billion dollars billion. and is working harder than 99% of the NBA still to this day. A billy up. That's unheard of, bro. That dedication, the, we'll use times where the disease of yeah. wanting to be great, of needing to be great, of like you just said, like, I know I'm the best ever. And Braun saying he's the best ever into the camera, I would be more surprised if he said somebody else was the best ever. Braun should absolutely feel like he's Who, the best player ever. My thing is, that, that's what made me so mad about the tweet. Who the fuck he's supposed to call to go? My nigga, come the fuck on, bro. What? Like, that is LeBron James. He absolutely should think he's the best player ever. So the, the level of excellence you have showed, sustained, and blessed us with over these past 20 years, bro. I want to say thank you. Um, you it damn near made me emotional watching you get your flowers like that and watching you get your flowers like that. It was beautiful you broke this lake record on the Lakers with the 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 organization the Lakers have been for the NBA, bro. It's beautiful to see you finish your career out in LA where all the legends have ran through. Damn near like every NBA legend has been there other than like Mike and Tim. Like, yeah. like the top seven players of all time, damn near all play for the Lakers. And if they didn't so, play for the Lakers, they played against them. Come on now. So I just, I really just want to say thank you, bro. Like you breaking the all-time record. Like I can nitpick it. Of course I could. I don't get, I'm not though. Like, what the fuck is the point, bro? You broke a record nobody thought was going to break. And people, my last thing is people always talk about people. I keep seeing people say, well, if he didn't, he wouldn't have broke it if he didn't play this long. My nigga. <laughs> my nigga. Like, that's the point. Like, it's unheard of to be this good for this long, this consistent 
for this long, it is unheard of. Yes, Kobe would have broke the record, but his body broke down on him. Yes, KD would have broke the record, but his body broke down on him. Braun, Brody never broke down on him. You have to give him credit for doing the unheard of. Yeah, Braun, um, like, so thank you, Braun. Like, thank you. Congratulations. You deserve all the flyers. You're going to be playing another three years, so I'll give you your retirement, which I'll give a 10-minute round when you retire for real. <laughs> but just right now, I want to say thank you and continue doing what you're doing because you inspire Every, everything. Everything you said was amazing. I, you know, and I'm not going to repeat it. I'm going I'm, I'm to uh, take the other side um, and just talk about the night. So niggas was giving Brian like, hella shit on Twitter. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's like his life in that quarter. Like, <laughs> play the rest of the game. My nigga, I would have went home, bro. <laughs> what? Oh God, nigga, I, I'm LeBron James. Y'all bro, we got the we got the Thunder on national TV. We we the drag Shay Shay Gilgis on national TV to TNT to watch me break this record. And y'all like, oh, it's ten seconds left. LeBron and I really mean this for the bottom of my heart. LeBron deserves every second of that fucking press conference mid-game. He deserved more. I was so happy that they legit stopped the game, get Kareem up, yeah. everybody take the pictures, do all this, because I it, it, I really love seeing LeBron get the flowers while he's here with us, for real. Because it really, it really fucks with us How, what, you know, what happened with Kobe because we really you know it's really easy to be like you know I, I give him the flowers when he retire mm -hmm. when he go to the Hall of Fame when he do all that when he's not playing against my team then I'll do that right. but it's really important that we don't do that because bro we just don't know for real mm -hmm. and what LeBron has brought to the game not only for just how he's changed the game for players they talk about the player mobility and things he did, which I mean, you this still trade see deadline, no, no. this trade deadline show you mm -hmm. how crazy the league is now. But what you said is so important about how he never cheated anybody. Braun spent a million dollars a year just on his body. Just he paying a million dollars to work. Come on, bro. He, Say it again. He Say it again. Paying a million dollars just to put in work. And if anybody, and especially that's why I like watching that game. Because you know the two players in the Lakers who was playing the best? Greatness. Greatness. On nights where they know the world. Like, hold here. The world watching. You know who was playing well? Greatness. Westbrook. LeBron. Shea. Greatness. Greatness. And the commitment that Braun has had to make since he was a child. Since a child. To be this great is beautiful. And, and basketball... More so than football, I love it because he still has the rest of his life to be LeBron. Mm -hmm. You know, football, when you give your life to the game like this, like we didn't see Jerry Rice hands mm -hmm. or players that, you know, like the, it takes a toll on their body. Brought a billion up, bro. No major injuries. And, and, and what he's given to the game is just, it's an impossible standard to put on anybody else. Mm -hmm. Braun, yeah, literally, it's an impossible standard to put on anybody else, and I want to, I want to piggyback off that and end with one thing. I one want to talk about just the pressure that what he dealt with came with because it's not like Braun came from um, L.A. and he was just rich ass nigga that had this rich ass family. He was just a freaking nature that right. came from NBA parents. Braun was in a single parent household, and if you don't know, Braun was like moving. Living with teammates. Monthly basis, living with teammates, having to have his coach take him to practice because his mom couldn't because she was working. So, as a kid, when you see that, and not only you saw that, all your niggas broke too. All your niggas' families broke too. All, all of them. And it's your job to change everything, to change everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then let's fast, let's take it back to 2003, 2002. Reebok throw you 10 million. Reebok throw you 10 million. <laughs> and you look at that shit knowing you got to go back to a one bedroom apartment you sharing with your mama where it got ropes and mat mouses everywhere. Your niggas got to go back to their bullshit yep. ass apartments. And you say, nah, I'm worth more than that. Yeah. And they look at you like you fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. This little nigga think he worth more than that? He 18? I just gave that nigga 10 million dollars. Yep. 20 years later. You got to Billion dollar Nike deal. He got a, a, a billion dollars from one deal. From one fucking one deal. deal. He has a billion dollars from like you're it, special, dog. 
He's special, bro. And bro, the the, the commitment to being like LeBron, like it, it's the same thing as Tom Brady with the commitment to being the best and not cheating yourself. Braun gave everything to the game. And it's still and giving. It's still giving. And to pull your homies up with you. To be where you are. It's, it's, man, it's just. It's a, it's a, it's it a, feels scripted. It fucking. Literally, it's it, a movie. It's it a feels, movie. It feels scripted. It's a movie. And I tweeted, I tweeted the other day, like, his documentary is going to be some of the craziest shit we ever see in life. Because, man, it is, it's just, like, it's seriously unthinkable. Like, the shit you have fucking done for, like, literally just the sports world. Like, fuck basketball. The sports in Germany. You're one of the most famous people on the planet at this point. You know, I really liked. I really like the Nike commercial afterwards. Oh my God, yes. The the we are all witnesses, and I love you know I, I even love the the witnesses shit mm -hmm. when he was in Cleveland the first time mm -hmm. because yo God put Braun on this earth to play basketball. Oh my God, there was n listen. We talk about he could have been to the NFL. He for sure could have. He could have played any sport. God put him on this earth. He was meant to do this shit. Ambidextrous at six nine two sixty. Running a 4-2 so he could play basketball. And we are literally all witnesses of all the crazy shit. Like, you could take three years of Braun career, and it would be enough for other niggas. Come on. Any Come three, on, bro. Any, almost any three years you pick since he made the playoffs, you could take that chunk, and it would be enough for most Hall of Fame niggas. Between the MVPs, the finals appearances, the championships, the scoring title, all that shit. You could literally take a chunk. And that would be a lot of niggas' whole career. And they'd be cool with that. And they'd be fine with that. They'd be 100% cool with that. Yeah, man. It, it, we, we were really blessed, blessed bro. Blessed, <laughs> blessed to see bro. So, what shout out to you, bro. Man, I really, shout out, bro. I really just wanted to give you your flowers today. Because, like, we, we mess with you because, like... Honest to God, we take you for granted. Like, honest to God. A lot of the right. sports world takes you for granted because you have given us nonstop storylines, nonstop moves. So it's easy yeah. just to, like, nigga, I know who the fuck you are, Even bro. Even off the court, I, bro. So, <laughs> bro, like, that nigga said maybe it's me. Like, come on, bro. Like, come on, bro. We've never <laughs> seen a nigga like, like, the line. Special, like, bro. even for, you know, the thing is, like, you gotta have one flaw. The line is the funniest fucking flaw. Bro, it's the best flaw you could possibly have. You being a liar. Because like, don't, don't nobody believe that nigga. Like, <laughs> Yeah, man. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> man, so for real, bro. Shout out to Brian, bro. Like for real. So I have one more thing I wanted to say, but I fucking forgot it. But it, it, I said enough. So, um, lastly, wrap up the show. I'm talking our heads off. Uh, I do want to touch on the Grammys for a little bit. Yeah. Um. Oh, well, hold on. before before we let you get your rant off, the NFL awards. Uh, Nick Bosa's defensive player of the year. Oh no, do your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nick Bosa, defensive player of the year. Justin Jefferson, offensive player of the year. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. I'm trying to see. I'm wait. I'm literally <laughs> waiting on my phone to load up right now. Damn five. Did they announce the MVP? Are the player awards today or Saturday? No, no, they're, they're announcing awards right now. Oh, they're tonight. Oh, yeah. okay. I thought they Sox were run defensive rookie of the year. Thank God, he should have. What the fuck? Yeah. Um. And Garrett Wilson was offensive rookie of the year. That's Thank a, God. That's kind of guy. Thank God. I was hoping yeah. they did not get that to Brock Purdy. No, so no MVP yet. And no MVP. Um, fuck, what's the other award? I'm looking for coach of the year. No coach of the year, no coach MVP. Year. Are they done most improved? And that's the other one. No, no comeback player of the year. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Comeback player of the year. That's what it is in the NFL. So, yeah. Um, real quick to the Grammys. Uh, I'm not going to do my rant first. I will do say that for the end of the show. <laughs> but <laughs> I do want to go through the winners just in case y'all were living on the rock. So, uh, record of the year was won by About Damn Time by Lizzo, and she was the first black woman to win that award since Whitney Houston in 1994, so big ups to Lizzo. And she um, got up there, and you know what she fucking said? Beyonce. She said, Beyonce, I went to your concert, it changed my whole fucking life. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. So, yeah, shout out to, uh, shout out to Beyonce and Lizzo, that was really important to me. Um, <sighs> song of the year was just like that by Bonnie Raitt. Don't know why, but... Uh, Yo, they, they um, pulled up her YouTube. Please, bro. Yeah, like 100K bro, on that YouTube. shit was some of the funny they shit. Said was, they said she was doing a quad to run. Bro, bro. Man, man, I was crying, bro. bro that shit is Oh, crazy. my God. But uh, best new artist was Samara Joy, who I need to get familiar with, but you are black, so congratulations, Shout sweetie. Out to you you are sure. black Hell and you yeah. are fine. Um, they said the name. I was like, damn. She got up. I was like, oh, shit, we won. <laughs> <laughs> best pop solo performance, Adele, easy on me. 
well deserved. Of course, Beyonce won Best uh, Dance Album. Of course, Bad Bunny won Best uh, Music uh, Ur Musica Urbana Album. I guess I mean, yeah. Best, right. best Spanish nigga album. Um, um, and then Kendrick Lamar won Album of the Year and uh, Rap Album of the Year, as he fucking should have. Yeah. Um, um, but I wouldn't have been mad if Future Pusha would have won it. Everybody in that cur category other than Jack could have won that award, and I wouldn't have cared. But once I saw Kendrick at the award show, I was like, oh, he won. Thank God Jack Harlow didn't win that album. Oh my God. Lord. Who he does, um, but. <laughs> but, so those are the main award winners, but I do want to touch on the uh, 50 year hip hop performance that they did from all the verses, from LL Cool J opening it. And if you don't know about LL, go do your research. Yep. Very important to the start of hip hop. Seeing Ice T up there on stage yep. was amazing. Y'all, I know them as actors, honestly. I just had to go do my research. Our generation knows them as actors, but they are. Uh, some of the reasons we rap is yeah. where they are today. Especially Ice um, Yeah, seeing yeah. Scarface up there was amazing. Um, Gangsta Boo was up there. We saw the Locks was up there. So yeah. shout out, I love seeing Kiss anywhere. Yeah. Um, so uh, Glow Real Little Baby. It was just beautiful to see hip hop Ghostface watching Hove rap and be a fan of rap to yeah. make you remember that like oh Hove was a fucking rapper like Hove yeah. like loves this shit it's a reason like yeah. Hove was quote Hove, was, Hove wasn't always a business no no I seen seeing him do the Method Man shit the M E T H O yes 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 not Method Man I said Ghostface my fault I meant Method Man yes um but just seeing Hove rap alone in them songs was like beautiful seeing DJ Khaled flicking the lighter saw Public Enemy we saw Run DMC back together like it was just beautiful to see I think. Y'all slighted Atlanta a little bit, but I'm not. I'm. They said they asked a lot of people, and shit just got different. So right. it might have been scheduling conflicts. But would have loved to see Ti, Jeezy, Two Chains, and somebody from Outcast. Atlanta, uh, Ross, any Outcast. Cool we saw. Yo, Outcast. Yeah. No, Big Boy was there. Big Boy was there. Oh, I mean, uh, uh, but Three K. Yeah. I think that was more Three K saying no to Big Boy than anything. Else. <laughs> Big Boy, but I wish I would have seen Three K for sure. Um, that's, and that's the one argument Atlanta niggas would never pick a side to. Shout out no, for those niggas. Yes, bro. exactly. So I, uh, I very happy to. I was very happy to see that. And I will say this, BT, your award show has been slacking for a very, very long time. This is your year. Mm -hmm. This is your year to get everybody to tune in. Um, and lastly, I want to touch on God did the performance at the end, which ended the show, which was amazing. Yeah. Shout out to Cali for getting that together. Shout out for Ross Wayne, Friday, John Legend, mm -hmm. and Hove. Um, now, Ross and I love how they took it outside because it was just a big, like, it was pretty much telling you, like, this too big of a performance to have in here. Yeah. Like, we need uh, more room. So, right. I love seeing Ross open the song, kind of do his thing, go sit down. Seeing Wayne walk in, great, kill your verse. Thank God Wayne ain't dressed himself. I know you thought that too. I, I was like, thank God this nigga got us some regular clothes. <laughs> this nigga came out all black. I said, holy shit. <laughs> I said, this already for real. <laughs> so, so, yeah, seeing Wayne, uh, you know, Wayne is an excellent performer, so wasn't no sh shock about that. DJ Cali, I love you, bro. I really do love the energy you bring yeah. to the stage, so thank you for that. John Legend, Friday, y'all sound amazing. But Hove, man. Watching Hove rap that verse next to Emery and Juan, yeah. and next to Wayne, who look up to him, and next to Ross, who look up to him, and next to Cali, who look up to him, really brought that verse to life. Mm -hmm. And the bar that did, I don't know if, if it was a certain bar or the whole verse, but the bar that did it to me was, it's got to be crazy to y'all. Nigga, we surprised. surprised. Yeah. Everybody at this table, nigga, we not supposed to fucking be here. Right? Yep. We not supposed to be here and just watching whole really rap about the niggas he's sitting next to and yeah. go through his journey at that voice at the dinner with Hove, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the Last Supper yeah. set up. It was just amazing, bro. And the yeah. breath control it takes to rap wow. sitting down for four and a half minutes. My God. I'm so glad because you asked me, like, man, do you think they do it? Hey, you know, hell yeah, they go do the whole fuck. They right. better let home do right. that. And that's what I did. I did ask this. Yeah. I was like, y'all think he finna, I think y'all think he just gonna cut the verse off in the middle. He wrote the whole shit. And he just kept fucking yeah. going. It never wavered. Like, his voice never wavered. He yeah. kept the same pitch the whole time. So shout out to Hove and just seeing, I love seeing Hove and Wayne together because I haven't seen them together in a while. Um, So I love seeing that. And that just meant this a lot to me. I, I really love this. <laughs> I really love this rap shit a lot. So that award show meant a lot for me. But then, yo, <laughs> let's get into it. Drop the bomb. Look, Harry Styles. <laughs> Look, Harry Styles. I like as it was, my nigga. Did I say so? I, 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 man, man, I 
really fucking like that song, my nigga. It's a great fucking tune. It's cute, my nigga. Your tour, <laughs> your tour was crazy. Your tour was fucking crazy. <laughs> you sold out Madison Square Garden 15 nights in a row, my nigga. Crazy. Shout out to you. That's ridiculous. Crazy Harry Styles. But look, my nigga. What? <laughs> it's Beyonce. Man. That's Beyonce. That's Beyonce. And so... The issue I have with this is because we talk, I'm gonna sit back. <laughs> we talk all the time about every year we have a show where we're like, the Grammys don't fucking matter, the Grammys don't fucking matter. Yep. But it's like, the reason it's so frustrating is because all of this is because of us. Mm -hmm. If you understand what I'm saying, the reason the Grammys had the high viewing rating they did was because of us, because of the tribute we did, because they knew they was going to get to see Hole, because they knew they was going to get to see Beyonce, right? Beyonce has dropped, oh, what was the first one? I Am Sasha Fierce, mm -hmm. Beyonce Subtitle, mm -hmm. Lemonade, yep. and now Renaissance. Those are four perfect albums. I throw four in there, too. She didn't get nominated oh. for, for Album of the Year. Oh. Crazy of fucking enough-ish. Crazy of fucking enough. Four did not get nominated for Album of the Year. What? Those four albums all get nominated for album of the year, and every single year she has lost. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are saying Beyonce should stop submitting and stop showing up, she's not going to stop doing that because so many people work on Beyonce's projects, so many people get Grammys when she wins. So because of the person she is and how important she is to the people around her, she's not going to stop yeah. submitting her work. But the Grammys you owe her because. Renaissance really changed like the year last year. The entire year. Like it was really good. changed the year. You felt yeah. the impact Man, of Renaissance. Niggas, like niggas, niggas, and this is included women. Niggas is not like a legit. gender term. Yeah. Niggas was legit just happier. Like niggas was legit just in Yo, a better mood. Like, like just in a better mood. You heard the mood. album everywhere. You yep. would just walk by a restaurant. Oh, that's Virgo's Groove. Oh, why about, yep. oh, that's Cozy. Yep. TikTok, boo the fuck up everywhere. Yep. It was just, oh, they were in the club playing the album from start to finish. Yeah. That is fucking unheard of. Niggas doing when you trains. move a culture like that forward and you have that impact and you have that, you have the dedication, the songwriting, the excellence that was displayed on that album, you deserve that award, especially, especially when you have been slighted from the award three times. Yep. Three it's been three times you've been slighted over that award. And now I will say this. If Bad Bunny would have won that award, I wouldn't have cared. I would have been like, ah, oh, that makes sense. Facts. That would have made perfect sense. Yep. But other than that, it's like, how the fuck does she not get that award, bruh? She has dedicated her life to this shit. As we just talked about with Brady and Brock, she has dedicated her life to this shit. Every second of every day, these performances, these concerts take... So much fucking energy and preparation and effort and work and dieting and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And for y'all to go up there and damn near fucking embarrass her. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck do we have to do to get the recognition we deserve? Because after the war show, I'm like, damn, they was just fucking pandering. They just gave us a war show. They just gave us a 50 hip hop tribute. And they just gave us a goddamn performance. And they gave Kendrick his uh, voice time. And... They they let you know Beyonce was coming and they let you know she was there and then they stopped the show when she tied the and, and, and then they were teasing her performance. But, like they were teasing yes, they yep. were teasing her performance. That, might be a surprise that never fucking happened. Yeah. And you do all of that for her not to win the award, bro. And it's just such bullshit because you know she deserves it and you know that album was the best album of the year. Easy. It was the number one album. I don't even look at magazines and websites that rank albums because they a lot of the time be bullshit. But sometimes they get it right. And every it's like ten websites had Renaissance as the album of the year, no doubt, right? So it's just it's disappointing to go watch that and to, to see her that effort she has been put in just not be her not her not get her flowers. So, but I do want to give her her flowers about becoming the all-time Grammy winner. If anybody fucking deserves it, you you do. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, bro, none of them album of the year. None of them are album of the year. I I agree with everything you said. Um, I was watching the Grammys and it was it was annoying because being the type of skeptic that I am, I thought it was a great chance that Bad Bunny was gonna win just mm -hmm. because Beyonce they weren't gonna let Beyonce win. Mm -hmm. 
but I was very pleasantly surprised with how everyone else treats Beyonce. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason I wasn't as mad about how many years I, as I've been for her in the past years and mm -hmm. had other people. Especially the way Adele talks about her, the way Lizzo got up and talked about her. And you know, so it reminds me of the end of the top 100 list for Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. Because it's voted on by the players. Mm -hmm. the, the, the announcer said, even in his whatever year, Tom Brady peers know that he is peerless. Beyonce peers know that Beyonce is peerless. So these awards that you give out, you can put Harry Styles' name on it. You can give him album of the year. Some amazing achievement. Shout out Harry Styles. Shout out One Direction. Shout out all that. Um, but they know. And every and, and that's why Beyonce. God bless her. What a beautiful, listen, God, I love Beyonce. Such a class act. My God. Such a class act to, to to understand that she gotta wear that. Cause damn, I wish Kanye was there. Cause man, listen, <laughs> bro, man, what is it gonna fucking take, bro? Man. Because you know, and when Lemonade didn't win, I was, there was you know, a lot of people. It was not a traditional album, mm. shock drop. Mm. It was a you know, okay. And I said, I'm gonna get y'all a rollout. I get y'all a lead single. I did every, you know, I. I it's frustrating. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. And, and it's it's so uh, the irony of being the all time Grammy winner and not having an album of the year it is just mind boggling. And, and it, that's why that's why music and art is so hard for artists. And that's why you've seen so many who don't do award shows because when you're when you're in the NBA, bro, no one else is gonna be. Listen, if you won't score this fucking bucket. Nick is not going to be able to... Nobody can ever take that from me. Mm -hmm. Beyonce dropped easily the best album. Mm -hmm. The most impactful album. Mm -hmm. And no matter what award they're going to give to other people, they can't take that from her. No. So when the tour drops, and Nick is paying 10 k to go, Beyonce knows. I'll be there. But I'll it's just, it. It in my phone. It's just so frustrating. So frustrating. Because like we said with Ron getting their, you know, getting their flowers, you know, Beyonce deserves that. Yeah. And Beyonce don't deserve it when she's Whitney Houston age. Yes. She deserves it. Thank you. She's still doing it. She deserves to sit on the top of that mountain where all her other peers already place her. Mm -hmm. Not for you to overrule it because it's going to be a bigger Grammy story that Harry Styles went mm -hmm. over Beyonce. Because you're playing with her. And, that, and that's the problem, and that's why it's so frustrating that, you know, next year we're going to have to go back to the Grammys mm -hmm. because, like, the reason the Grammys are the Grammys is because they know Beyonce's going to come. And they know Jay Z is going to come. That's why the Grammys are not the BET Awards because everybody comes to the Grammys. Mm -hmm. It's a real thing. And they know as long as they keep, you know, I will she get it this year. Ah, this might be it. Ah, ah, ah. Oh no, it's another mediocre white album. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it. here we go again, and that's why another mediocre white album. I don't even know the last time a black person won album. I put this on Twitter. Has not even a black person has a black woman ever won album of the year? I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I literally could not find anything. I, yes, uh, Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill won oh, album okay. of the year. Lauren Hill won. Um, and 3K was another black person one, but I think they were the last two black people in it, which was over 20 years ago. So, which is sick, because we are music. We are the culture. Like, everything y'all do is because of us. But I lastly just want to say, like, I get why Drake is just, stop, like, stop submitting his music, because it's like, I'm fucking Drake, and y'all be slighting me. Like, I'm yeah. not fucking Drake. And then, but, and then y'all playing, playing with my name, Y'all be playing with my name, yeah. bro. And, like, and like, the same thing, Wayne. Wayne hasn't won a Grammy in years, and he be like, I'd be like, damn, Wayne, you got five Grammys? Like, you Wayne. Like, you you, you, you did it. But it's like he said in his, one of his thank you speak on Instagram, he was like, I just get so frustrated when I don't get invited places because I work so hard. So it's like, why am I not getting noticed? Yeah. And it's one thing to work that hard and to really like, like when Rain Funeral didn't get nominated, like the five albums that got nominated above Funeral should have gotten nominated above Funeral. It's one thing for that to it's another completely different thing. When you deserve it. You show up, and they just don't give it to you. When everybody in the audience 
everybody watching know that's Beyonce's award. Yep. They got watch parties for the Grammys just because Beyonce. Niggas got their family at their crib because Beyonce there and we might get a Beyonce. Man, not even not even out here. Record of the year. Shorty won it? She was like, there's no fucking way y'all just... Yes, so, like, yes. Shit. They turned it. She like, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Me? God, so... She looked surprised she had to give a speech. <laughs> <laughs> like... She's like, you, me? Like, I gotta yeah, get up? So, you, you know what? I wanna shout out the fan who read the name. Because <laughs> I for sure would have said Beyonce. I would have too. I would have too. Listen, I would have just said Beyonce name and whatever y'all do on the back end, y'all figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm not gonna let y'all slight me on saying my presence. So I do, I do want to end on the positive note. Um, I want to jump back to Lizzo because her speech was going, and then she said, "Hold up, where Beyonce?" At? <laughs> <laughs> and she she looked for it, and then they panned to Beyonce, and Beyonce was like, "No, no, 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 yeah. no," because Beyonce like is used to that, and she be wanting people just to, like that's your moment, exactly. that's your moment. Yeah. Don't give me that. But Lizzo saw her do that and was like, "No, bro, like yeah. I have." to tell you this because I need and I know I can have like I, you invited me to the after party I already have the invite I know I'm going to see you after this and you can I can tell you after this but I need everybody to know that you are the reason I'm here because when the next person wins this award and gets up they'll tell me and when the next person they'll tell them so it's just a beautiful thing of like just black people and black women giving each other their yeah. flowers on stage for the whole world to see bro like it was beautiful so all of that does piss me off that Beyonce did not win this award, but it was a lot of good shit that I saw that night that did make me happy yeah. as a fan. Um, yeah, and this episode will be titled "Even Beyonce Peers Know She Is Peerless." <laughs> so uh, that wraps up. Damn, I don't know how long we talked. That was the episode right there. Yeah. Um, sh thanks for y'all for sticking through. As we said, like, subscribe, comment, YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, um, TikTok, all of that. We own everything. So thank you for joining us, and we will be back next week. Uh, as always, we love y'all. Oh, shout out to Blue for the hoodie. Shout out to Blue. That shit is crazy as fuck. You need yeah. to stand up and show them niggas that. That shit is crazy on, as fuck. Come um, on, bro. What are niggas talking shout about? Shout out to Urban Outfitters. Come on, now. <laughs> niggas putting that shit on for real. Ignorant youth, you feel me? We shout out everybody. You yeah. feel me? Niggas putting that shit on for real. Shout out to Urban Outfitters. Come on, now. Niggas putting that shit on for real. 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 Niggas putting